the Azeroth review. Uh, say hi in chat and then we'll know that it's working, especially people who are new to this. I'm just going to do some, a thing. There's a thing that's not doing a thing that it's supposed to do. Never mind, the rest of it works, I think. Um, so, yes, I have been enjoying my Tuesday off. Hello, Lacious. Lacious? Lachesus. Lachesus. I think that's an I. Iachesus. Something. Um... Yes, so I've been spending a disturbing amount of time on Reddit today. Lucasis, thank you. Uh, oh, it is an L, okay. I thought it was an I. I've been caught out by that before. We had, yeah, we had uh, we had a Shadow Priest join my former guild, actually, where they had a name that began with an I. And it, it was I, but because it made no sense being, starting with an I, it rolled off the tongue much easier if it were an L. We just kept pronouncing it as if it were an L, but it was an I. Um, hi, everyone, and uh, Mahal. So, yeah, I've been on Reddit today. Uh, so I quite like looking at Reddit. You always get a few little gems in there. The chat rules box. Yes, I installed one yesterday because people keep abusing the, the G word. I've added a few more in as well. A little bit more difficult to get them through. There's been an alarming increase in the number of gnome-related posts on my YouTube videos as well. I don't know what that's all about. I had to tackle that three times in the mailbox on Sunday. And it's happened again today. Um, so, yeah. No, there were a couple of good things on Reddit, actually. There's one post in particular where I felt sorry for the guy. And there was another one where I sort of felt sorry too. But I didn't know who to feel sorry for. So, the first one, this, I did a photo of this one. This is good. I love this one. Uh, not that one. Where is it? It's here somewhere. It's here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so this guy's gone on starting all wood carved Frostmourne. Okay, nice. He's, he's drawn out a little template there. And then someone's replied, I can't unsee a clown face. Um, the problem is he's drawn it in. It sort of looks quite good. But there's a knot in the wood that does actually make it look like a clown face. And I was thinking, oh, God. And then uh, someone sort of replied, oh, you know, when you're doing a project like this, sometimes it's not a good idea to show people the very early work because you can get discouraged. Uh, whereas I sort of replied, well, actually, it can be a good thing because if you don't realise you're making a clown, you could go to an awful lot of effort before you uh, and, and down the wrong road. At least he can now redo it on another bit of wood or a different position on the wood. Uh... You have a raid. Well, technically, I did my former guild. No, former, former guild. Former guild and a half. In Challenged. Basically, the Death Knight guild master at one time did go gnome. He went back, obviously, because I bullied him mercilessly until we went back. You can't see the clown face. So basically, hold on, where's me, Ashbringer? This knot here, where the pommel of the Ashbringer is, uh, is making like, a, imagine that's a nose. And then you've got the eyes there, which are actually supposed to be the eyes of Frostmourne. And then a mouth here and a long clown chin, basically. But uh, it might be. There were some people actually in the comments said they couldn't see it. But you know, as soon as the guy said it, I could see it straight away. It's like, oh, wow. But then there was another one. This is the one where I didn't know who to feel sorry for. So there was this post by someone saying, oh, I made a hearthstone pin for my boyfriend. You think, oh, that's nice. And you imagine, you know, just being told that, you imagine this person's into their crafts. They like making things, crafty things. And uh, that's a nice thing to do. But then you saw the, the close-up photo of it, and it looked crap. And I don't just mean it didn't look like a hearthstone. It didn't look like a hearthstone. It sort of resembled one. It really wasn't very good. But it was so bad that I think if I were to do one myself and not take a great deal of care over it, it would not be worse than this. And I was thinking to myself, I don't know who to actually feel sorry. I feel sorry for someone, but I don't know who. Do I feel sorry for this woman who, if she's gone to the trouble of taking a photo of it, well, first of all, giving it to her partner. Second of all, presumably this is a relationship she wants to continue. Second of all, taking a photo of it and putting it onto Reddit for people's approval. And so she's she thinks she's put effort into it. Uh, so I don't know whether to feel sorry for her for the fact that it's absolutely dreadful. 
or feel sorry for the poor recipient who, you know, will be presented with this thing and go, oh, and have to sort of say, thanks very much, whilst sounding sincere. And then, and then to make it even worse, realising that it's a pin, which means they can't just leave it on their bedside table and pretend that they appreciate it. No, no, they've got to wear it in public. Yeah, about that. Uh, uh, that would be a tricky situation to face down, it has to be said. So, but there were some really cunning things in there, including, including there was, uh, after the Shuzhen, like the mount, it was the mount that's been done for like a Chinese, um, uh, what is it now? Chinese New Year, that's it, Year of the Dog. It's going to be Chinese New Year of the Dog in a few days. So, you know, they made a dog mount, which is the only dog mount as far as I can tell. There are wolf mounts in the game. There are no dog mounts. So I was a bit disappointed that we can't have a dog mount. I like dogs, uh, even though it's not my ideal sort of dog. A dog mount's a dog mount. And I thought I'd quite like to get that. And then I thought, oh, no, we won't be able to get it. But then they said we can get we can get it on the online store if you're in Europe or NA. And uh, the monk's class mount is a dog, is it? Well, that doesn't help me. Oh, I'm not a monk. All right, should we say one that anyone can wear, ride then? Um, but, uh, so yeah. And then someone put a post on Reddit with a before and after thing. If it's a tigerish thing, it's not really a dog, is it? It's really more of a cat. I don't know what the monk one looks like, though. I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, it can't be a dog and a cat at the same time. Um... That would just make the world end. So, yeah, so someone posted before and after, and they showed that the, the dog mount had got smaller overnight, basically. And there's a lot of people say it's too small now. And community manager in North America sort of agreed and said, okay, you know, they've increased the fluffiness by 30%, they said. So they brought that out. But then they realised there were problems with that because certain people were getting lost in the fluff. I'm guessing they meet gnomes. But it didn't say. So they reverted it back and they're going to do something about it. So, you know, there's an example of where, you know, occasionally some feedback on Reddit actually does get read and stuff like that. But anyway, uh, evening, Augie. Um, well, I mean, I, you know, you say you, know, you might be a tiger, you don't know. I don't, I don't vividly remember what my class mount looks like, Paladin 1, because I don't use it. I don't like it. You know, I have um, a paladin horse. In fact, I've got two of them, should the need arise. And I don't see that the level 61 needed improving on. What I wanted was a Pegasus mount. I want, If it's going to be a flying mount anyway, I wanted it to be a Pegasus mount, a proper paladin flying mount. But no, we just got a horse, a big armoured bulky horse that I don't even like the look of. Uh, that leaves fiery hoof preets because that's you know that's a paladin thing. It's a tiger, so you're a monk. You can confirm that it's a tiger thing with a hat. <laughs> it's a tiger with a hat. Um, oh, the interview with Peculiar. Yes, obviously that was the second version. The first version was better, of course. It was very disappointing, even though. Brightpaw was a bit frisky at the start of the first one. So there would have been little bits of it where you would have seen a cat's anus. But, you know, and it, whereas he was quiet in his bed for the second one. So, you know, that happens. But the actual flow of it was, was obvious. It's obviously always going to be better the first time round when it's more spontaneous. As opposed to when it's almost like going through a script read at the second time. Because you know what you said the first time. And you're just basically trying to say the same things. Occasionally some things were a little bit different. Some things missed out. So, yeah. So I remembered an important lesson, uh, or I learned an important lesson. When you're doing a video interview, make sure you're recording it, because, you know, otherwise, that's a bit of a problem. What was this? Hold on, am I missing something? Um, 
Well, no, there was a bit of vomiting and R in on it. I had never done an interview before. And, uh, yeah. I'll tell you what was... I mean, there, again, there was another reason for going on Reddit today. Apart from the fact it's holiday, I get to do that. I imagine, you know, this is the sort of thing that full-time YouTubers get to do because they get to... They'll get to... Like, I hardly ever get to read through stuff on other forums and things like that. I hardly ever get to watch people's videos these days um, because you don't have time because then if I'm doing that, I'm not actually making one. But... Um, uh yeah so one thing that was disappointing to me so i brought out two videos yesterday so there was the peculiar interview which i'd actually done the weekend of course but you know i wanted to make sure she was okay with it because it's only polite you know i think it's just polite with and i don't know how other people do the interviews but i will sort of give them the questions that i intend to ask and then when i've done it let them give it the okay to make sure they're okay with it if i need to make any changes then that's fine so uh, I had to wait for that. Otherwise, it could have gone up on, like, Saturday. But you went up yesterday. And um, and then the other one, which was on just a little tiny bit of news with to do with weapon scaling. And disappointingly, when I came on today, like, the weapon scaling video was on, like, 2,000. And the Peculiar interview was on, like, 500, 600. I thought, oh, crap. Um, I, I'd have thought it'd be the other way around. I'd have thought there'd have been moderate interest in the weapon scaling. And a lot of interest in uh, the stuff on data mining and how that works. I was very wrong. So I gave it a little bit of a boost on Reddit. Um, even though it doesn't seem to have got any real likes on Reddit. But nonetheless, it's obviously diverted a bit of traffic there. I can't tell whether it's done any good in the end. Because all I can actually see are how many people watched it. Um, YouTube, there's a bit of a delay with the analytics. It's like always two days out. So I can't actually tell if people watched it yet or just clicked on it and went, oh, no, I'm not watching that. I uh, can never tell that for a couple of days. But anyway, uh, so what are we going to be discussing today then? Apart from doing an alpha dance to see if I can actually... I don't know whether they're going to bring out another wave of them out tomorrow. They haven't today. You generally prefer reporting, like with the weapon damage change versus data mining. My sometimes said to wonder if things get too technical. Well, I don't think it's very technical. Um, but, okay. I don't know. I, I don't know. We're going with attack power instead of weapon damage this year. Well, that is what they're doing, though. Uh, and although, like as one comment said, it's going to make a bigger difference to... Um, it's going to make a bigger difference to spellcasters. Because they, like with melee, like we always get, even with abilities that are based on weapon damage, they're also based on attack power. So, you know, it's always like a bit, whereas with spellcasters, it can be entirely based on that. Uh, it, I didn't publicly mention to her the disparity with Blizz paying attention to US forums versus Euro forums. To her with a capital H. Uh, if you mean peculiar, no. Uh, that's not particularly relevant. To Wowhead, because they, because Wowhead just have one forum. They don't, they don't partition North America from Europe, and neither does any other forum, and neither does any games developer forum that I know, apart from Blizzard. Evening, Miss Al. <clears throat> uh, like the idea of not having to farm specific weapons in favor of just getting better ones. Oh, you mean as opposed to the relics? Yes, that will be better. Yeah. The fact that... Because secondary stats, uh, it obviously depends. Secondary stats may well have an effect. Um, but yeah, it, with relics, of course, you had your nine... For each type of relic, like holy fire, whatever, you had your you had like nine different... Was it ten, actually, now? Nine or ten different traits you can get on it. And yeah, there's always ones that are going to be best. And the Netherlight Crucible really didn't help in that regard. I mean, that just made even more of them, really, didn't it? Um, well, you say you still have to farm specific weapons. To, I'll be honest. You know, if something's going to have 10 item levels, it all depends on stat weights, of course. Like, at the moment, for me personally, and I think the case for a lot of paladins, I can't speak about other classes and specs. Strength is my, 
it sims the lowest. So I know there are some, I think feral, or it used to be, if not, if it, it might still be the case, where item level basically is king because agility is just way stronger than anything else, any of the secondary stats. For me, it's not. The secondary stats are worth more, like, on a point-per-point -point basis than any secondary, uh, sorry, than the primary stat, which is why, like, it's quite funny. Like, with gems, you're allowed one of a 200 primary stat gem. So I can put a 200 strength gem into one item, but I can only have one of them. It's unique, equipped. But because you can now have 200 haste gems or mastery gems, uh, I wouldn't use a strength gem in anything because it's not as good. So in that situation, then, yeah, you will want to farm a specific weapon. But if it ends up that strength for me ends up being the more powerful stat, which it should be, you know, the primary stat should always be worth more than your secondary stats, otherwise why are you calling it the primary stat? Which should mean that actually a weapon that's 10 item levels higher than another one should just be the better one, even with a situation where it's going on to attack power. Um, Simon is uh, always going to be here to stay. The thing that really, I mean, simming was always useful. I mean, I did as far back as TBC. There was a, a great little program called Ra, which was fantastic. Um, there was a lot of control with it as well, and it was very user friendly. That was, you know, the TBC version of Raid Bots, really good. Plus, it didn't. It wasn't web based. You could just download it onto your computer, so it was great. Uh, I used that quite a bit. And you could put, you could alter quite a lot of things for the type of boss and stuff like that, and um, so that's always been the case. But for people that didn't need to do it to the nth degree, there were also such things as bisless. Of course, a bisless didn't help you if you wanted to choose between two items that were not the bis item. Like there might have been three types of boots in that dungeon, in that raid, and and if you got. If you, if you had two pairs that were not the best one, it still didn't help you to decide which of those two were better. But um, the reason why you really do have to do it now is because of things like Titan Forging. Titan Forging means you can't have a bis list. You can't. That's all there is to it. Um, there's lots of things that came in Legion that... Well, not lots of things. There's a few things that came in Legion that basically meant you just have to sim yourself. You know? Relics, especially with the Netherlight Crucible, Titan Forging, Legendaries, you know, um, all these things basically meant Simit. Wonder how it'll affect dual wielding classes. They have to fire up twice the number of weapons. Yes, they will. And again, with each one potentially being able to Warforge up to 10 item levels higher, um, then yeah, they'll want ideally plus 10 item levels on their two different weapons. Uh, will items be a set like getting the rope? No, no, no. They'll be individual. They're going back, they said, to individual weapons. That basically means, yeah, a rogue's got to find two of them. Maybe they have a sword in one hand and a dagger in the other. Because that's another thing. There might be a situation where, you know, to be a particular type of rogue, maybe, or other way around. Uh, sometimes, it has been the case in past expansions that dual wielders occasionally would want their... Actually, didn't Enhancement Shamans want their best weapon in their offhand? And sometimes, like, rogues would want their slowest weapon in their off... No. Oh, I can't remember. But sometimes you would actually want, you know, a fast weapon in one hand and a slow weapon in the other or something like that. There are all sorts of weird things. And that, I don't know whether that would return or not. But you will certainly need to get two. Uh, it does make it harder for dual wielders. But, you know. I have little sympathy for warriors, though, because they can choose not to. And they'll be wanting two of my two anders. You know, warriors will be nicking my weapons. <coughs> which they haven't done for an expansion. Oh, no, I wouldn't be put off rolling rogue for that reason. Rogues will always still be strong. And there'll be plenty of stuff to drop anyway. It'll drop off loads of bosses. I don't think rogues I don't think any rogue I've ever known has ever struggled to get the stuff they needed.
Uh, well, you say on dual wielders, given advantage, say they could conceivably get plus 20 item levels. It doesn't work like that. Because the stats you get on a one-hander are basically half of that that you get on a two-hander. So it's actually, it's not an advantage to dual wield. It's the other way around. You know, if you get a Warforged weapon, say, plus 10 item levels, that's only on your main hand. That's the equivalent across both your weapons of getting a plus 5 bonus instead of a plus 10. Hi, Smurf. In Balamore, I've never been to Balamore. I have no idea. Uh, oh, I'll tell you what I did see yesterday. I didn't. I think they're okay, though. I think I'm all right because I didn't see anything on the news afterwards. I had to drive down to the hospital yesterday, and it's a pain in the ass. There's like no parking there. It's terrible. But on my way there, which was down the road, coming down the other way, there was basically a car, and it, okay, it crashed. All right, car crashes happen, but it was right on its roof, and there was nothing about the road. That could have indicated that it's not like it's come off and and there's like an, a steep embankment that's done that and I couldn't work out how it ended up on its actual roof completely upside down, but I didn't see anything on the news, so I'm guessing no one died, so that was good. Um, the return of the hunter weapon. Oh no 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 no, no. hunters aren't sharing my weapon. Uh, no, they won't. They'll literally not be sharing my weapon because. Oh no. What if there's a really good pole arm? Uh, hopefully, I won't want a pole arm. No, it's no. We're not having survival hunters. They can piss off. Who? I mean, who would choose to be melee anyway? When you've got perfectly good range specs, what sort of lunatic does that? I wish they would make dual wielders one weapon, then let you dual wield both of them. Well, you know, they're not. I don't think they're going to. Uh, lots of games do do it indeed, yeah. But uh, And I can't say for certain because I don't know. Um, until we start, well, yeah, until we start, I suppose, seeing um, some actual drops. I mean, it may be that there are some. I don't know, like with the dungeons, do they have drops yet? Or is it, because sometimes they don't when it's very early. Uh, they just have like placeholder items and you can't always tell. But I'd be very surprised if that's the case. I would I would much more uh, be inclined to think that they're going to, you know, just, you're going to have to get two. But at the same time, they, you know, when they're working out loot tables, they do bear in mind the number of people that are going to need different things. Um, I mean, daggers, all right. Daggers, you could be in a little bit of bother because they are only really needed by rogues. Uh and when I say only really needed by rogues, I mean they're only needed by rogues. So, but as I say, I've never in the past ever. It's been my experience that when daggers drop, there's usually no one who wants them because the rogues do tend to get their daggers, and then you just end up with loads of daggers dropping that no bugger can use. So yeah, you just watch Quinn get trolled by a weak aura. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. I know about that week, Aura. Do you know what was really funny, though? Uh, this served my guildies, right? On Friday, I actually streamed this. On Friday, we were doing the guild outrun, uh, like, heroic run. Well, we did normal Argus first, like Agrimar and Argus. Uh, I went on my Paladin because I hadn't done it previously in the week. So, hoping to get an Ammon Falls. So someone linked the weak aura, and obviously everyone in the guild knew what it was. But there were some we, we'd got some pugs, and it included someone who actually follows this stream. I don't know who he's in today, uh, but he sometimes watches me when I actually stream my gaming. And he was in on his uh, DK tank, and so someone links that, and he was asking what it was, and I whispered him, "Just no, don't bother with it, because it just does this thing." And then, when the boss died. He actually did get Amonthor's vision. And it wasn't a troll. He actually got it. So it sort of serves the people right for trying to troll him with that weak aura. Uh, priests can use daggers, but they only really want spell damage daggers. They don't really want ones with like strength or agility on it. They'll want it with uh, intellect. And traditionally, like although <coughs> they may well bring out... Let's say they bring out a pole arm. It might have strength or agility on it to be usable by anyone who could use a pole arm. They haven't in the past done that with daggers. It's either a spell damage, a caster dagger, 
or it's a rogue dagger. Now, of course, they could change that. They could change it so that it has agility or intellects depending. That would be okay. But that's not that doesn't tend to be what they do. Uh, I didn't end the stream and I didn't kick uh Oh sorry. Oh, you mean Quinn? That's a bit oh dear, do you know what he is a bit he's a man child, he is, isn't he? Don't weapons just give you primary stats? Uh no no they have secondary stats on. Cloaks have secondary stats on as well. Oh, but do you mean all three? Uh, they haven't done in the past. They have like been able to change between a couple of them. And you're making me doubt myself now. Maybe they did. I don't remember anymore. It's too long since we've had weapons. But I do seem to recall that... Because I remember some specific daggers that used to drop in Wad from the Roly Round boss in uh, Blackrock Foundry. Can't remember its name now. The big snail thing. It wasn't a snail. It was a thing that rolled around a lot. And they were, you know, it was never any casters on there. So I think that was just because it just had agility on it. They're getting rid of... Yeah, I mean, well, weapons will still do damage. Um, so it'll still affect your auto attack. But spells will not be based on weapon damage anymore. Or Gorgia, yeah, that's the one. Uh, so... Or because they've been data mining the spell, all the spell, like basically all the spells that are data mined at the moment are all based on attack power, even ones that at the moment would be based on weapon damage as well. Uh, or spell power, obviously, depending whether you're a caster or melee or physical damage dealer. So, yeah, it basically means because, like, if people remember when the Netherlight Crucible came out, suddenly a loads of specs got a buff. And the reason for that is because when the Netherlight Crucible came out, everyone was going to be able to upgrade their relics by five item level each. Which basically meant your weapon was going up by 15 item levels. Um, fantastic for someone like me, Rep Paladin, because we have a lot of abilities and our major damage abilities based off of, uh, weapon damage. Which is why it's always bad if we, if we don't get Titan Forge relics. That's actually really bad because we need them. But there's some specs that don't really benefit at all. Obviously, Windwalker Monks must have been the one that benefited the least because they got the biggest buff. Uh, so that, you know, that would go away, that sort of system. Because the weapon will now just bring... It'll just be a stat stick like every other piece of equipment that doesn't have, like, a set bonus on it. It'll be a big one still because you don't get equal stats on equal bits of gear. Like... You know, 950 wrists don't have as many stats on them as 950 weapon. Weapon will have more stats. So it's still better to get a higher... If, you, if you're going to get a higher item level or something or going to have something warforged, it's still going to be better that it be the weapon than a pair of wrists. But it's not as crucial as it would have been. Oh, it, it will definitely be a, a, an improvement um, not having things based on, on weapon damage. Yeah, that will definitely be an improvement. You got trolled by the weak aura. Yeah, see, I... Uh... You see, I'd have to be sure. I uh, What did they tell you it did? <coughs> this is why it's always better to get uh, weak auras as a package from someone you sort of trust. Because um, it's... There are, I mean, there was one, what was the, in Tumas Sargeras, I remember, there was a guild where something with a weak or a hide lace, it caused the raid leader to disband the entire group. They'd just killed Mistress or something. I don't know the details, but there was something in it. And it basically made them disband the raid or disband the guild. No, disband the raid. Something weird happened anyway. It was the Disband the Guild. Yeah, that was right. Disband Guild Week or I don't know what it did exactly. But it caused a certain amount of alarm on the stream because someone was streaming it. I can risk. Uh, so they told you that it helped keep the tree up longer. Whatever that means. Oh, dear. Ah, well, that's your own fault for not knowing the mechanics. Uh, so what the tree is, basically, in phase, the last phase... Uh, there's a tree 
And you use that to raise yourself up when everyone's dead. So you release spirit, you go over to the tree, you come back alive. But if you die in the last phase as well, you can still do the same thing. You can just release spirit, go over to the tree, res up. But every time someone does that, it weakens the tree. At some point, the tree will die. So, you know, ideally what you do is try and avoid having people die. Um, the other thing is you can sort of heal the tree a bit, I think. Although I don't know how easy it is to keep it up. But yeah, it, the tree, it's, that's what the tree does. But obviously, yeah, so a weak aura wouldn't help keep it up. Um, healing it might help keep it up. I don't know how valid a tactic it is to try and heal the tree. It's probably a better tactic to have people not die so much. Some people will, of course, die. Can't always be helped. Because those soul bursts do a lot of damage. Uh, you're currently 2 out of 11 mythic. What do you mean? You're 2 out of 11 mythics who don't know what the tree does. It does the same thing. In, it does, the tree is the tree. The tree behaves the same in LFR, normal, heroic and mythic. Uh, I don't know. Your prop paladin loved healing the tree, did they? And your holy would transfer a beacon to it. Okay. Well, there you go. Yes. Well, it can heal the tree, but it only works for a short period before the tree starts taking too much damage. Yeah. Did I misread it? Oh, you do know what the tree does. Okay, fine. Well, you shouldn't have believed them that there's a weak aura that can help keep it up then. Anyway, it's not it's not really a malicious weak aura. It's just not very helpful. Some deaths are unavoidable, yes. Uh, I don't know about uh, eventually kill the tank. But the soul, the soul bomb, soul, the soul burst even uh, can be fairly fatal. Everything, you know, the, the stuff you get on you will kill some people. But some people die because they're standing in shit. Usual thing. So not everyone needs to die. I mean, I am not too disappointed when people die as long as they still kill the boss. Because it's all retribution procs for me. While we still have them, hopefully. I'm still hoping. I've got some half hopes they might actually uh, do something with that. But not at the moment. The boss debuff doesn't go away, it just keeps stacking. Yes, that's like a soft, well, a semi-soft enrage. As you say, you can heal the tank, uh, res the tank up. But um, that's just there to give you a hurry up. Kill the boss before it kills you. Which is how things used to be done. Before they had berserk timers. In the initial raid bosses, they'd just do a thing at 20%. Have I posted it on the US forum? No, I need to sit down at some point and uh, plan out what I'm going to say. Because I don't want it to be too much. I don't want it to be a complete, right, you need to do this, 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 and this. I want to keep it to three suggestions with some sensible reasoning behind it. Uh, looking at other streamers who've got alpha invite, uh, what are you actually missing at this point? I'm missing, I'm missing an alpha invite. Uh, is what I'm missing. I'm not quite sure I understand the question. Are you are you saying, because I have noticed a few streamers say, oh, there's not actually a lot of stuff to do on the alpha at the moment. Which, from an entertainment point of view, may be true. There is loads to do in the alpha. Because, all right, if you just want to play the alpha, sure, there's not a lot to do. If you want to test the alpha, there's loads to do. You know, I could have been spending, like, uh, this is my second day of my holiday. I've, it's been fairly chill. It's, been, it's quite nice. I'm getting a bit of a rest. But I could have spent all yesterday, all today on it and still be having things planned for tomorrow to do. Uh, but if you're not testing it, if you're not interested in testing it, you're just using it for entertainment purposes, then, yeah, it's limited. That's why you just have to make a load of shit up and put a video out on it. Not naming any names. But... Uh, but yeah, there's loads to test, but the testing is not necessarily all that fun. Uh, oh, sorry, gear. Yeah. Currently using a few normal tier pieces. Uh, yeah, the answer will be to sim it without even reading it, but yes, have a look. Is tier always better? It, it ought, probably ought to be. There'd have to be a huge range of item level for it not to be. But yeah, you will, as always, have to sim it. 
Lots of rage about the alpha and missing abilities right now. I, I keep saying I think it's a good thing because like people keep saying they need to wait and see for what happens. You need to put the feedback in because when when they actually release the build that has the classes with all their abilities, it might be too late to do anything about it. People need to be set. Basically, people need to be taking this approach. My class is going to basically be like it is in Legion, but without the artifact abilities. That's your starting point. So what you need to do in your feedback is to say what you think's worked well. You know, keep that. That was all right. That was decent. That works okay. Um, then there might be feedback related to, but you know they're not going to give you a load of artifact abilities. You're going to lose the vast majority of them, come what may. But if there were any one or two, let's say, that were particularly important, then you need to be saying that. And then if there are any things that weren't that great in Legion, you ought to be saying that as well, again, with reasons. That feedback needs to just go in and in and in so that when they come around to spending some development time on... You've got to remember, there's 36 specs, okay? And they don't have a team for each spec. They have a team for classes. Uh, 36 specs. So when they come around to working on one of those specs... They're not going to come back to it and change a load of stuff. They might tweak it a bit. So if they, if you wait for them to bring it out in all its misplaced glory, you've blown it. It's too late then. Uh, I had a group complain that it wasn't 965 equip when I have a 969 bag item level. I had to explain these in two normal... Oh, no, in a pug. No, no, no. In a pug... You go for your highest item level stuff. No, 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 no. Highest item level in a pug. Don't be messing about with going for the gear that makes you do the best damage or healing or whatever. No, no, no. Because the reason is you don't need to be in your best gear for a pug because they will always ask for a higher item level than is needed. So if you've got any idea how to play your class at all, you'll be fine. Just use your highest item level gear every time. Uh, let's have a look. When if you get an alpha invite, can you make them put demo form back in for demo warlock? They're not going to do that, are they? Because that's it's now called metamorphosis for demon hunters. They've nicked it. You know, like death knights came along and nicked some warlock stuff, and then demon hunters came by and nicked some stuff as well. Um, you you just want to be thankful that they're not doing a necromancer class because otherwise you'd lose everything. You would literally be there for summons and health stones. <coughs> They're never putting demo form in again. It's gone. You've lost it. It was stolen from under you. Illidan nicked it. I mean, to be fair, Illidan's the first one who had it because, you know, uh, Warlocks didn't have it in TBC, did they? It came in uh, Wrath, if I recall. Am I wrong in that? I think it came in Wrath. After Illidan used it. So, you know, it was an obvious one that they were going to lose as soon as Demon Hunters were announced. You have a pug eye level set which equips all your highest item level pieces to join your group, then you put on your real gear. I'd just leave it on. I would just leave the highest item level stuff on. Who gives a monkeys? If they want item level, then you give them item level. What you currently do is you have a macro to equip your sign up set as all your highest item level gear, then once I'm in, switch back to your best gear. No, I would just uh, I would just leave it. I would log out in your highest item level stuff so they can see it on the armory as well. And then I'll just, you know, this is my gear. And leave it at that. There's no point in arguing with pugs. If you're desperate enough to get in. I mean, I, I can't even get into pugs. I have no, I don't even try anymore. I couldn't get into a normal pug. I have attempted such things. And I get knocked back every time. At least the eye level issue seems mostly fixed with early testing. Based on early sims, intelligence is more intellect sorry, is more valuable than any secondary stat for a shadow priest. Um, but uh, we know it's not going to be like it is now. That's the that's the thing. 
I mean, I would, I would still keep the feedback that, because one of my feedback items might well be that really primary stat should be better than the secondary stats. The primary stat should always be worth more, always. Um, come, come what may. Is EU that harsh? Uh, what in terms of pug? I don't, I don't know. But in the first week, like in literally the first week of Antorus, I because again, just like last week when I had to work and do an evening uh, at work, and so I missed most of the raid. The same thing happened on the first week of Antorus. So the guild were doing heroic, and they'd cleared most of the bosses. I got in just in time for Varimathras. So I did the last four bosses on heroic, which meant I got my ahead of the curve achievement. Um, but then that weekend, I thought, well, I'd you know, quite like to do the other bosses for gear. So I tried to get into a pug. I was able to link the ahead of the curve achievement in week one, and it still wasn't enough to get in. And you can bet your ass I was easily beating their item level requirements. Still couldn't get in. It must be the way I do it. Uh, you can't do that because then anyone that looks short thinks you're stupid for having that random gear on. Ah, okay. There's some people deliberately log out in their highest item level gear just to try and win the WoW Progress competition. You know, on WoW Progress where it's got um, what your rank is for item level equipped. You know, some people log out in their highest item level stuff just for that. And they might have a mixture of, say, a tanking and a healing trinket even to achieve this. Um, so, no, no, no. People will, if they do look you up for that, they will just assume that that's what you're doing. I'm not suggesting you equip a tanking and healing trinket to try and get into a pug. However, in Wrath of the Lich King, when I, I quit the game, but then when I came back and just to play casually, and I created a couple of horde characters to play with a friend, and... There was a pug that I went into on my paladin. I did a death knight first of all, just because you can start leveling. You start that at like fifty level fifty five ish, and um, it would be quicker to get a death knight up to level cap than it would a paladin. But I did the so I did that just to get into the because we're just doing very casual raiding, very low level crap stuff. But then I did a paladin as well, and I was joining this ICC pug on my paladin. Um. That's ironic, isn't it? I could get in back then as a scrub casual. Can't get in now as a Mythic Raider. Never mind. But anyway, I did. There was another Retribution Paladin there. And this was with gear score. Okay. And I was inspecting him. And he had the worst. He had like a mixture of DPS and tanking and, and holy. So he actually had a, a mixture of all three specs worth of gear just to get his gear score up. And utterly useless he was in the fights. Utterly useless. Because he still wore them on the fights. He wasn't just doing it to get in the raid and then change them around. That's actually what he wore. Uh, you can't have primary versus secondary stat debates. They would have to inflate primary stats so much they'd be OP. There's no such thing as OP if it's the same for everyone. It's fine. It's fine. Um, actually, do you know what? To be honest, with having all these abilities based off attack power stroke spell power, um, instead of just some of them being based off that, it might have the effect that primary stats become more important anyway. You know, that's a factor. So it might be that it just naturally sorts itself out just, just with that little thing. So it may not be anything they have to do any extra work on anyway. <coughs> Have Blizzard gone far enough with weapons not Titan forging, uh, or could they go further with rings? There's no justification to do it with rings. Um, they're not going to have it with Heart of Azeroth or Azerite armor. So that's four pieces. What we don't know about those four pieces is whether or not they can war forge. Because just saying they can't Titan forge isn't the same as saying can't war forge. I don't know if they have said anything about that, by the way. With weapons, they have confirmed they can Warforge up to 10 item levels and maybe get a socket, but they can't Titanforge. I think that is enough. I think it's okay because Warforging is not rare. It's uncommon, but it's not it's not as rare as like hoping to get a plus 30 Titanforge. Like, where, what do we hope for? Oh, hang on, what's the cap at the moment? 
985, isn't it? So, okay. With Mythic gear, you're hoping it'll Titanforge up to plus 25 item levels. That's pretty unlikely. But plus 10... That's not so bad. That's not that unlikely. If you do it enough, if you farm it enough, yeah, you've got a decent chance. Evening, Morellis. The issue is always going to be for people who have weapons that are in high demand. I mean, who am I going to be sharing my weapons with? Uh, other rets, of course. Warriors and Death Knights. So, you know, it could be worse. Because you don't always get a load of those in any guild anyway. Whereas caster staffs, um, you know, you're talking boomkins, shadow priests, warlocks, mages, um, well, any priests actually, I suppose. Resto druids, or also druids, priests, mages, warlocks, uh, elemental shamans. So five classes, all wanting those. And usually you have multiple. You know, usually have a couple of warlocks, a few mages, maybe a couple of priests, a couple of boomkins sometimes. Uh, they, <coughs> excuse me. Yes, they did say they wanted the upgrades to be rarer. That is true. But I think still Warforging will probably not be super rare. They, well, no matter how, they did say 10 item levels as opposed to five for the Warforge. That's not to say that it automatically either goes plus 10 or nothing. It might be that it can Warforge plus five or Warforge plus 10. But they did say up to plus 10. Unless, of course, they miss said that. But they did say that. Because I noted that down. Uh, you got a 980 Flame Licked Girdle Titan Forge last week. Flame Licked Girdle. Yeah. I, well, I, I've got a 980 Bloody Tear Cloak. Which is really annoying. It's spectacularly annoying. Because I keep getting cloaks from caches. I got a cloak from my... Uh, mythic mission this week. Uh, it's the one thing I can't wear because one, the the legendary I would ideally use is the legendary cloak, but I can't wear the legendary cloak because I also have it's a tier slot at the moment and I only have four bits of tier. Um, but the other thing, even if I'd got a fifth bit of tier and could swap out the cloak, it's a nine eighty cloak. It's by far my highest item level piece, so there's very little chance of that as well. As a mist weaver, you'll have all the main hand and off hand brews for yourself. No, you won't. Because it won't be brews. You'll be looking for a staff as well. You'll be wanting I'd completely forgotten about monks, I have to say, sorry. Yeah, you'll be wanting that caster staff the same as everyone else. Is it possible to get Amunthal from an Argus mission cache? No. Because it's not on the loot table, it's on its own special thing. Um, so, for example, you can never loot it from the Argus chest. You just get it when you kill Argus or you don't. Uh, it's not actually in the Antorus loot table. It's a separate thing. So you can't possibly get it from the mission cache. Unless someone at Blizzard cocked up. But if they had, you would have thought someone would have got one by now. Uh, you've got a 980 Dream of Shame. Drape of Shame, sorry, from the weekly cache. And you was in Rhett's loot spec. Oh, yeah, I've I've had Drips of Shame as Rhett uh, from uh, doing Karazhan. Uh, I've never got to keep one because I'm somehow I'm quite lucky with them. Whenever I get a Drape of Shame in Karazhan, it tends to be quite high item level. And the healer always, oh, I love that. Um, so I've never actually got to keep one. But, yeah, I, I, I mean, I've been Rhett spec and got that. Because although the healing thing, obviously, is nothing for Rhett, it's still a cloak. Most cloaks don't have an effect on them, that's why. So it's still just a cloak with stats, and it just has that bonus effect on it, that's all. Sim doesn't say that a 980 tier cloak isn't better than Whisper. Well, no, it will say that the Whisper is better than the 980 tier cloak. What it won't say is that it's... What is What the Whisper is not better than is my four set bonus plus the other two legendary it's not a case of either i equip the legendary cloak or i don't i swap it with another legendary it's not that much better than the other legendary that i can swap out a 980 item level piece for like a 960 piece everyone forgets about monks i apologize you don't see very many of them well not wind uh, no sorry mist weavers anyway 
Uh, are Blizz changing the Mythic Plus affixes in BFA? Oh, I would have thought so, yeah. I think, you know, Mythic Plus has gone pretty well, but they're bound to do something just to do something new. Yeah, I can absolutely... I haven't heard any details either, but I, I reckon they'll do something um, just to change it up, if nothing. It's not that there's anything specifically wrong with Mythic Plus. There are some suggestions I would have about it. Maybe I should do... Actually, now that I'm paid for it, maybe I should do loads of posts on the US forums. You know, I'll do a post on Red Paladins. I'll do a post on Mythic Plus. I'll do a post on everything I can think of. I'll do a post in every single forum uh, section. See how that goes. Actually, no, I've only got a week. Actually, I've gone two days through my week off now. It's going It's going too quickly. I'm going to be back at work before I know it. I haven't even won the lottery yet. Um, so, yeah, I, I can see them do that. I don't think they'll... There's no need for any big change with Mythic Plus because it sort of works. Do you know what I saw, though, on Twitter today? I thought this was a great idea. Um, this was for Elder Scrolls Online, and it's advertising a team for, of developers who are going to be... It says, an all-star team of ESO developers is taking on veteran hard mode scale caller peak, which I guess is one of the new dungeons. Uh, wouldn't it be great if Blizzard like uh, streamed a t their own Mythic Plus team doing some Mythic Plus dungeons? That would be quite good at, at community engagement. You know, get a team of their best Mythic Plus Dungeoneers just to stream a few. I might even watch that. Um, does random stats and weapons give us a good reason to want Reforge back in the game? We already have reasons for wanting Reforge back in the game, but Blizzard don't want it. So, you know. They don't give any reason that sounds logical so they have some other reason but whatever their reason is it's not coming back because you know they don't want it and there's not enough of a fuss being made about it just titan forging alone makes it reforging a thing that's worth bringing back um but anyway go with the holy priest healer with the legendary cloak they'll pass on it well yes okay they would pass on it I mean, they don't even give me retribution passive, you know, those bloody things. Like, we have a gnome holy priest, and I see the angel of shame on a regular basis. I don't get a retribution passive from it, though. It's so annoying. You got drape of shame on your guard, you druid. It was in guard. Yeah, because it's, it's, cause it's a cloak. They don't, dis they don't, it's not an accepted thing that there are, Melee cloaks and tanking cloaks and caster cloaks and healer cloaks. There are just cloaks. They're not specific to specific specs. It just so happens that the Drape of Shame has a healer effect on it. A healing effect. Um, it's a bit like the ring that increases your auto attack damage. A caster can get that. It's just, you know, because rings are not normally specific. Especially now they don't have primary stats on them at all. Your friend who is a wreck got a 980 Titan Forge Scourge Wing. Yeah. They all seem to be getting those set me. I've, I'm still stuck with my 945 one. Which is still better than my 960 trinket I have. And the 960 trinket is a good trinket. But it's not as good as that. Uh, you'd love to watch an all, all Blizzard Mythic Plus or Mythic Raid. Oh yeah, Mythic Raid would be even better, yeah. Obviously not when it's first come out. That's just silly. But yeah, maybe uh, maybe at the end of a tier, they just stream one night uh, an actual raid team that just does it. That would be quite good. They'd have to be very careful with their select their roster selection, though, because woe betide them. Uh, if there's a particular spec missing, which of course there has to be with only 20 people, then all of a sudden everyone will be on the forums going... Even Blizzard know that this spec is shit because they didn't even take it on their thing. So maybe they wouldn't do the Mythic Raid just because of that. But a Mythic Plus Dungeon, yeah, they could do that. That would They wouldn't attract any... Uh, they would, I don't think there'd be any negative consequences of doing that. At this point, you question how many people at Blizzard do anything more than Pet Battle and some casual Heroic Raiding. Uh, I mean, it's possible that not many do more than that. Um, one of the unfortunate things, I guess, of working 
in an industry like that where it's not like normal office hours because even though you know they'll still go home and stuff like that they'll they're much more likely to be thinking of stuff to do with their work at the end of the day if you enjoy your work you'll naturally do that um so it might not give much time for it it's a bit like you know full-time youtubers full-time youtubers almost never do any hard mode content in the game because there's no time for it like even Asman Golds had to knock it on the head for a little bit. Your holy priest got nine eight five ring of collapsing futures. The win with the on use damage ability. Well, you know, but yeah. Well, that's it. exactly it. exactly quad erats demonstrandum. You know, rings and cloaks are just the rings and cloaks. The fact that the odd one has some specific purpose on it uh, doesn't stop it being available to all specs. So you guess reforging would stop the need to farm endlessly for different sets of Azerite gear? Oh, no, 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 no. Because the Azerite gear will have special effects on them. Um, that's not stats. <coughs> so reforging wouldn't stop that. You will still have to go and uh, find the Azerite gear you need. I can see myself, you know, if I think it's bad at the moment with all the legendary stuff I've got in my bags... I can't even begin to dread what my bags are going to look like with all the bloody uh, Azerite gear. I'm going to end up in it. Because I'll have this stuff and I'll be going, uh, it might come in useful one day. I'd better hold on to it. Because what I used to do uh, at the start of Legion, like I would get stuff from dungeons and think, no, it's no good to me yet. But it might be. So I used to keep it and I'd put it in the bank and stuff like that. And then what I'd have to do every few weeks, I'd have to go to the bank and go, well, okay, it's now it's now too low item level to ever be useful. So then I would disenchant it. Uh, I need to do that again. Every now and then I just have a clear through my bags because it's stuff that I never use, but I keep it just in case. But then eventually it just falls, you know, the item level of the stuff I have now just becomes too high. And you know it'll never be useful then. World first team versus Blizz team race. Uh, well, no, you could. I'm sure they could put together a, a decent team. The thing is, though, they'd be able to choose whatever gear they wanted, wouldn't they? Uh, you heard it from Ian first. I'm off to level my allied race. Which allied race, though? They wouldn't need all the tank specs. No, they wouldn't. Is it true they are putting some of the legendary perks into classes as abilities? I've not heard that. It is possible that some of the legendary uh, effects might find their way onto Azerite armor. That's possible. Um, it's not impossible that it couldn't find its way into certain talents and stuff though or you know or, or other abilities um i think it's much more likely to find its way into azerite armor there the way you see it the azerite armor consolidates the artifact legendary and tier yes it does that's exactly what it does that's what it's intended for which doesn't excuse quite some of the things that in the because that's the thing at the moment like you can't we can't data mine any azerite gear so we don't know what sort of things it's got on it um, so it's a bit of guesswork really but that doesn't mean to say there's no value in posting class based feedback because by the time we do see it it might be a little late because even when we start to see some of it well that's not all of it I don't know when it's going to be that we start to see all of it it might be quite late on warrior execute ring is now a talent Oh, well, if they nicked it from a talent anyway, yeah, they're just putting it back then, I suppose. It, was it the case that in Legion they just said, oh, we're just going to borrow this to put it on a legendary? And now that they're finished with it, right, you can have it back now. Here you go, we're finished with it now. Think of all the gold I'll blow on Transmog with all those sets. I blow my gold on Transmog anyway. I changed my Transmog again yesterday. I've turned back to, uh, oh, is it today? It might have been today. I've turned back to my vanilla into my vanilla PvP set. So 
So, but yeah, I, I don't know. Um, at the moment, I just see I, it's it's going to do my head in because I think people are going to do the opposite. I think too many people are going to be of the opinion, let's just wait to see what Blizzard do uh, with classes. But the problem with it is because Azerite armor is going to be such a crucial element within it, everyone's going to wait until we know everything by which time the game's ready to launch. And then it's like, oh, right, okay, now here's our feedback. What, it's launching? What? Huh? Oh, well, can you just change these 10 things we need you to change? No, no, we ain't got time now. So if you want to ch if you want to influence the way someone does something, you have to do it before they do it. But then the argument comes, but if you don't know what they're intending to do, how can you influence it? Well, well that's the trick. So you just have to guess. <laughs> you have to try and read into their what they're saying um which you know they i mean they've obviously posted their philosophy for class design you just have to read into that see what you can read in between the lines of and then try and work out try and work out where their red lines are that they won't cross and you just you know argue as much as you like unless you can actually get a thousand people to agree with you in a forum post you're probably not going to get anywhere with that um but with some other things if you can sort of think well, what I'm suggesting would be in line with that philosophy, then it's certainly worth doing. Especially if you've got some good, strong evidence for it. Um, and if it's something that was in Legion that you either want to keep or that you want to change, then there should be plenty of evidence for that already. Uh, it should be fairly easy to describe that. I'm just going to check something. Uh, just see how it's done. Yes. Oh, I might have to post the odd other thing on uh, Reddit every now and then as well. As long as I don't abuse it, I think it's sort of okay. Because I don't really post that much on Reddit myself. Don't know if other people do here. As it stands, Shadow Priests are losing two abilities from your core rotation. Because they're being made talents on rows they can't compete on. Uh, am I worried that three zones to level up in BFA will be a bit boring? Yes. Because here's the thing, I, I was worried in Legion with only four zones to level up in. And although there were plenty of quests to do, it wasn't an issue that you'd run out of quests. Um, the issue is that each zone has its own sort of theme. Even Valshiran, like Valshar being, okay, it was the shortest zone. You sort of had two maybe three themes in that because you had the sort of lush uh night elf type area then you had the corrupted emerald nightmare area and then you had the sort of weird gilneas bit um but even then the, it has its own theme sometimes you just don't like a zone thematically you know there's been zones in the past like blades edge mountains in tbc i just didn't like it hated it howling fjord in wrath don't like it do not like doing anything in that place uh you know i used to just do the first few quests just to get the quest for the dungeon there and then i would piss off out of that zone because i hated it you know you just get these ones i don't like um vashir the underwater zone you know uh so there's always in an expansion a zone that i just don't like and it's nothing to do with the quests as such and it's nothing to do with, you know, anything other than the fact I just don't like the theme of it. And when, you know, and, to, and the way it was in Legion, you had to do all four. Because even though you had enough quests to go around, um, you needed the rep. <laughs> so you had to at least get honoured with the faction before you abandoned it. And to be honest, you probably still needed to do the major quest line for the dungeon quest at the end of it for, you know, the... Um, Pillars of creation. Didn't like that. Um, so yeah, when you've got three, it means if there's one theme you don't like, that's a third of your leveling zones you just don't like. And it wouldn't surprise me if you have to do them still. Like in past expansions, you didn't always have to do them. 
So, you know, Blade's Edge Mountains, I was in it for a bit and then I left because I didn't like it. It didn't really make me suffer significantly as a result of it. Not doing much of Howling Fjord, again, it wasn't a problem. Whereas now, they, they sort of make it so that you sort of have to. Now you think that since WoW is now the kind of theme park MMO, or I think all MMOs are theme park ultimately, uh, and when you say eventually every continent gets boring, like when you're talking about the difference between theme park and so-called sandbox, sandbox by its definition has no purpose. So it can be interesting for some people, like Minecraft is your ultimate, I suppose. Not that I've ever played Minecraft, but I can imagine that's your like ultimate sandbox because there is, you know, there's no objectives in it that are set for you. So you just do your own thing. So which is fine. Um but with a role playing game, I like there to be a storyline to pursue. That basically means it has to be a theme park one, ultimately. Now, it doesn't have to be as on-rails as sometimes it is, um, although the most on-rail ones I've ever played is Star Wars The Old Republic. You get no choice about anything there um, in terms of where you go. You always have to go. You go through the same quest in the same order, and there's no say about that. The introduction was so good where everything seemed happy and druids are just being druids, then everything just goes to crap. Yeah, well, that's Valshara. But that's the only one where the theme even changed. All the other zones were just the same throughout. So Stormheim just felt the same everywhere. I know there was the bit where you go into like the underworld thing, Helia's area, Stormheim thingy. What's it? Um, what do we call it now? I don't, don't worry. Her little realm, her little underworld realm. Uh, that was obviously a little bit different, but you're not there for very long. And then uh, Asuna was the same all the way throughout. Helheim, thank you, that's it, yeah. And High Mountain was the same. High Mountain I really didn't like. Didn't like High Mountain. And yet High Mountain had the most to do in it. Val Shirai you could finish off really quickly. High Mountain, bloody ages. And that's without doing all the little side, because there were more side quests there than any other zone as well. Um, in terms of the levelling zones, in terms of the levelling stuff. There are different stories in all the zones. It's not the stories I had an issue with. Like, I didn't mind the stories in High Mountain. I just didn't like the theme of the zone. Didn't like it. It's crap. Uh, he thought the whole Scenarius and Malfurion hostage situation was extremely cringe. Yes, it was. Uh, it was pretty bad. It was... And, and Malfurion, I don't know whether it was an illusion or him, his actual voice. All that wailing... For Taranda to save him is absolute madness. Complete madness. So each faction gets access to other faction three zones after max level, correct? Yes. So in Balfour Azeroth, uh, if you're an alliance player, obviously you level up in Kul Taras. As soon as you get to level 120, then Zandalar opens up for you because you go there, do stuff. Uh, there's going to be world quests there. There's dungeons there. Yes. Um, I don't know what happens regards quests. I don't know if there's any actual... I suppose there will be alliance-based quests on Zandalar and horde-based quests on Kul Taras for level cap, just like there was for Suramar. That's my guess. But I don't know that. What about the creation of a new talent row? Any news about that? Uh, there is no new talent row. Uh, so I'm guessing they don't intend there to be one. I don't think it's the sort of thing they're going to spring on us halfway through now because Baal for Azeroth has been in development for some time. If they were intending an extra talent row, it would have already appeared. So the customization is going to come from Azerite armor, just as it did for uh, like artifacts in... in Legion, except with artifacts, um, you didn't really customize it very much because you ended up getting them all anyway. But with Azerite armor, you won't. You, there is some more choice to be made. Uh, you would argue that the theme also changes in every zone depending on the story you pick. Uh, it depends what you mean by theme. I just mean the atmosphere, the feel of the place. You know. Uh, you like the vanilla zones better because while there was more travelling, movement feels some more easily. 
Uh, they like sticking obstacles everywhere in the modern zones. Uh, well, there were obstacles in the original zones as well. Like there was uh, quite an interesting, you couldn't get, um, the, the way to get to Siri Gorge was quite interesting. I don't know what it was like for a Horde player, um, but for an Alliance player, you couldn't just wander into Searing Gorge. You had two ways of getting, to, well, technically three ways of getting to Searing Gorge. One was through a tunnel from Loch Madan. Only it was locked. You needed a key for it. Ah, oh, how do you get the key? To get the key, you had to go to Searing Gorge. Oh, but I can't get to Searing Gorge. The gate's locked. Aha. Uh -huh. There were two ways. The first way, which is the most dangerous, if you were fairly low level, was to go through Red Ridge Mountains into Burning Steps through Black Rock Mountain into Siri Gorge. But Burning Steps was quite a high level zone. It's not preferred. The other option, which was a very sneaky option, which because they've destroyed the Badlands area, you can't really see it anymore. But there was a horde base in Badlands, and I can't remember the name of it. And into the mountains, there was like a border between Badlands and uh, Siri Gorge. There was a path through, but it was very difficult to find. And, and I'll be honest, I went, look, I found it on Thoughtbot. So, you know, I didn't just happen to find it. But that was the way you got in. And then you had to kill a beastie. It dropped a helmet or something. I think the beast is still there, but I don't think the quest is anymore. It dropped a helmet or a horn. It dropped a horn. Not its horn, a horn that belonged to someone. And then you take it back to Ironforge and there's someone there who goes, oh, that's fantastic. Thanks very much. Here's a key to Searing Gorge. After which you were able to open the gate to Searing Gorge. Um, so there were certainly obstacles to getting around the place. But I did like the fact that there was more exploration. You know, so you could get quests that would just send you miles away. It's like, go to this place here. Oh, but to go there, I have to go through all these zones that are too high level for me. Yeah, that's right. Stick to the road. Don't go off the road. You'll be fine. And sometimes you would be fine, and sometimes you wouldn't. Uh, let's have a look. Valshara, for example, you go from Lush to... Oh, yeah, we've read that one. Um, once, once you're in a zone, the land was mostly flat. Well, it was. But the reason is... I don't think it's, I don't think, I don't know. It's because they want you to explore, which is fine. I'm all up for that. Um, but I think the game would have to be a bit different to do it properly. Like we should be able to climb things. So in Black Desert Online, for example, you could climb. Uh, there is no climb in WoW. So there is either thing you can jump over or there is thing you can't jump over and have to go around. Uh, that's the limit of movement, which is what makes it annoying, I think. Whereas it would be nice if there were... Obviously, no one's going to suggest you should be able to climb a sheer cliff face. But you should be able to climb over things that, you're too, that are too big to jump over. Uh, unless you're a demon hunter. And maybe you should be able to have grapples to get up a certain height of things. Not too high. Not, you know, scaling cliffs. But, you know, a little bit. Obviously, I... I mean, you've got the grappling Stormheim, but that's fixed grappling points. And it doesn't always go to the grappling point you're intending either. That's not helpful. Uh, like it when you actually got abilities or passives while going up the 10 levels to max cap. Even Wad have passives that got while leveling. Well, I've been saying this while I've been doing my leveling on my stream. I don't like in a role-playing game, I don't care what sort of role-playing game it is, if you get a level and you don't get anything, that's not good. I know you get a few stats, but that's boring. right? You should get something, and if you're not going to get something, they should reduce the number of levels. So yeah, you should get either a new ability, or, I mean, the ward passives were a good way to do it, I'll, I'll grant you that. Every two levels you got this passive. That was quite good. Except it should have been five levels, not ten, and a passive each time you got a level. I loved the grappling points in Stormheim. I just wish they weren't fixed, that you could make your own. Because they that you know that would add to 
uh, you know, they could put their little things in places like the treasure chest in places where you would need to consider how you're going to get there. A bit like a climbing wall. You know, you go to like a sports centre, you have a climbing wall and sometimes it's not just a case of climbing up. Sometimes you have to work out the best route to get to where you want to get because it's not obvious just by looking at it. Uh, you miss getting a talent point every level, yes. Well, it's not just the reward aspect of it. It's the fact that you're getting something that changes your character. Your character's gone up a level, therefore it's better than it was. Whereas now what happens is your character goes up a level, it's no better than it was. In theory it is, it's got a few more stats. But it's not, because apart from, you know, and this isn't an anti-scaling thing, because I like scaling. But the scaling stops you from, you actually get worse, in fact. When you're leveling, when you get a level, you get worse. Uh, because... You know, there's, with now heirloom gear, your stat ratings remain the same on the gear you had, but what they're worth is less. So your actual percentage, haste and crit and mastery and versatility goes down each level. So you actually become more useless each level. It's regressive. And that's really bad. Evening, Lamnaken. Uh, you were thinking last night, what if they made Contemplation a useless Paladin cosmetic ability? Well, I don't know about useless, but it is cosmetic. And turned it into a paladin version of Transcendence, where you can turn into a light and travel at the speed of light like Transcendence. They don't really like us travelling very fast, though. So, I'm not sure that would be a good idea. You mean to go somewhere? Where would we go? I don't, I, I don't really like the Order Hall, I have to say. It does my head in. I've never got over the fact that in the Paladin Order Hall there's a stained glass window at the end with light streaming in through it, but we're underground. I've 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 never got over that little mental barrier. I can't. Um, no spark. No 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 sparkle ponies. I don't use the sparkle pony. I only I, I didn't even do it as soon as it became available. I just waited. I couldn't be bothered. I eventually did it, and then I never used them. I used it like once when I first got the first one, and then that was it. Really looking forward to the hidden or secret mount quest events that Blizzard been putting in the game the last few expansions. Yeah, see, I'm not a collector of those, so I don't bother about those, but they are good bits of content. That's just my physics teacher attentiveness. Yes, it is. You know, I, I, I notice things like this, and it bothers me. It bothers me that there's a window with light coming through it, underground and you know where it is underground as well it's definitely underground because you can go to the exact location in the eastern plague lands where it would be where it would coincide with and there's definitely nothing there it's ground even in jungle cat so yeah don't like that so i shall be i shall be quite pleased to leave my order hall um I mean, rogues were fairly upset with their order hall because they, it wasn't Ravenholt. Did anyone actually like their order? I suppose warriors like their order hall. Theirs is quite a good one, actually. So I imagine the warriors will miss their order hall. Maybe a Naru is behind the window. Now they live in they 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 don't interested in paladins. They go to the priest place. Traitors. The. Uh, Let's try to think what other order halls are there. I don't like the monk one much either. I'm trying to think which ones I actually like. The mage one's terrible. The druid one, no, the druid one is awful. God, I couldn't find my way around the place. Could not find a way. Well, yeah, the priest one is all in one room, I'll grant you that, but I just I don't like the look of it. The warlock one's alright. Actually, no, I quite like the warlock one. That being said. The hunters all right. It's all right for hunters. It's not so nice for other people that happen to want to fly over that area AFK and then find someone's kicked them out just because they were flying over it. Which, you know, I don't I don't see understand how they have the rights to airspace. They are hunters. They're supposed to be creatures of nature. Why would a paladin need to travel faster? You'll travel faster all the way to the bench. Yes, very good. 
Uh, Naru are incredibly boring. I don't know. As that uh, Rakesh noted, they play music when you beat them. That sounds quite fun to me. You love the paladin archetype, but the vagueness of the bigs of whom we follow really annoys me. Ah, but that's that's uh, in the nature of a paladin, isn't it? It's a faith-based um, class. You hate the warlock one. Yeah, well, I don't know. I, I like it. It's fun. You know, having demons as uh, training dummies and stuff like that. It's all good stuff. Are we getting halls again in BFA? Not that I know of, no. In fact, no, I say not that I know of. I actually think the answer is no. I think they might have actually said that it's going away. And I don't just mean the order halls. I think, I could be wrong in this. Don't quote me. I think they've actually said that the whole mission stuff is going away as well. Like the, the mission table. I think that's going. I think it was considered um, a failed experiment in WAD. But it still made it into Legion because they did those two in parallel. Legion and WAD were developed in parallel. So they couldn't get rid of it. They could change it a bit. They did. They changed it a bit. But they couldn't actually get rid of it. I don't think they see it as a as something they want to continue with. So I think, could be wrong, I think they're just getting rid of that whole thing. Do Dark Iron Dwarves really fit as paladins? In my view, no. But unfortunately, I can't really argue against it because as people keep pointing out, there were, there are, in fact, not were, are Dark Irons in Blackrock Depths who use paladin abilities, like even Bubble. Um, so it's very difficult for me to argue against them. My levels of logical processing are overwhelming, are they how so? Um, I do naturally like to analyse things though. Some people say I overanalyse things, but there you go. It's a fun intellectual activity. The Naru did try to force Illidan to be Lightforged against his will. They did indeed. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, there's a lot of people will point to the fact that that was really zero. We don't know the other Naru would have approved of what Zira did. That being said, you also get the feeling there's never any sign of disharmony within the Naru society, as far as you can tell. You know, when Naru are in the same place, they do often seem to be of the same mind, as if they've got like a hive mind type thing. But we don't know enough about Naru to really know. Um, but yeah, it, it does... It was a very interesting cinematic. It was a super interesting cinematic, that one, because it does show the Naru in a different light. We've always thought about um, like old gods as malevolent and Naru as benevolent, whereas now, as I say, it's, it's that fairly interesting, although unoriginal storyline, of potentially they're just two different political parties, if you like, and they're both using us for their own ends. It's not that any one of them is good and one is bad. They just have different approaches. Very much like the Babylon 5 storyline. Which is what it put me in mind of. Made you quite embarrassed for Turalyon. Well, Turalyon was lighted for Even Velen, who is a big, you know, Go Naru champion. Uh, even he was saying to Turalyon that they haven't really told you everything they probably should have done. You know, he was basically saying, in fairly subtle terms, you've been lied to by the Naru. You know, they've kept things from you. So, yeah, a little bit of naughtiness on the part of Naru in this expansion. What Legion taught you, paladins worship space crystals. Uh, yes. So what new content can we expect in the next couple of months up to and after Easter? Any ideas? Yes, because in that Forbes interview, Afrasiabi was saying that there's going to be... He said, he didn't just say... Because like we, we know there's got to be some storyline bridging the gap between where we are now and a bit of Battle for Azeroth. For example, the war has to start up because the war will already be in full flow by the time Battle for Azeroth starts. Uh, the tree, Darnassus, is going to be set on fire. And I also get the impression 
Well, we know this. No, we know this because they've stated as much. Lordaeron will be under siege during Legion. Not Battle for Azeroth. The siege will take place during Legion. So we already knew that. But Afra Siabi was saying, admittedly he talked a lot of shit in that interview. But he was saying there's a lot of storyline to come in Legion. So there is going to be content. I still am more than 50% sure it might involve a small raid. Maybe a dungeon. Uh, but I'm only just over 50% sure of that now. I used to be like 99% sure of it. I'm less sure now. Because there's still not. There's nothing on the PTR and they haven't said anything. Uh, that's a bit concerning. But yes. So we do know there's going to be storyline based content coming. And a lot of it as he said. He did literally say there's a lot to come. So more than just the burning of, of uh, Donassus and the uh, Siege of Lordaeron. But that at least is fairly momentous. So it looks like the Worgen are going to have to look for another adoptive home. I don't know where that's going to be. Uh, I guess Stormwind. Those summoning guys on the Broken Shore is at it again. Yes, I know, yeah. Velen's utter disinterest in Zira being destroyed is like a priest or pastor losing overall faith during a zombie apocalypse. I don't know that. I think he's just a bit more pragmatic than sometimes we've given him credit for. Uh, oh, hold on. What are we saying here? Hold on. Order Hall resources are a success. I mean, who wouldn't want to have 100,000 of those laying around? I, mine's actually been diminishing since because I've stopped doing world quests. There's no point in them anymore. Um... So, yeah, but I've still got plenty to go. I mean, if I, I know there's someone in my guild who's actually run out. He can't even send off a mission, uh, which is, I, I wouldn't let it get that bad. I would go out and farm. Uh, I'm actually, I could just trade bloods in for them, actually, couldn't I? I've got loads of bloods of Sargeras. Yeah, I, I don't even, I don't have to do world quests ever again. It's fantastic. Um... But, well, yeah, I, 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 I can't remember exactly where they said it, so I can't be 100% certain but I, I, that I didn't dream it. But I'm pretty sure they said that missions are going uh, for this expansion. But I can't be 100% on that. So they're counting down to a date in March. Uh, do you know which date in March? I haven't actually looked at it. The thing is... Like I would have expected, because they say a tier should last four or five months. So, towards late March would be in that time frame. I would expect round about Easter for there to be some content, yes. So, it does, that would fit with where I'd be expecting it. However, the fact that there's nothing on the PTR would suggest the... It's either something that doesn't need a lot of testing or, I don't know, that there's not that much of it. You hope to see more from Silithus. Well, that's guaranteed. We are guaranteed to see more in Silithus because there's the sword to deal with. So that's fine. Uh, that will definitely happen as well. Uh, there were there were things data mined for that as well. But as it's still into the realm of spoilers, I'm not going to discuss here. Uh, you think they'll have a quest line conveniently spaced out one chapter per month? Yes. Uh, they might do. I mean, that wouldn't necessarily be a bad way to do it. How many resources do I currently have? I've got about 50,000 at the moment, so I've still got plenty to go. I did have 100,000 when I was still doing world quests. So, and I stopped quite a while ago, so they've been lasting. Must take the fact that any remaining content for Legion doesn't require the PTR. Well, no, just because there's nothing on the PTR now doesn't mean to say there's not going to be. It just suggests that um, there's not enough content for it to need months of testing. So maybe they just bring out the PTR in like a couple of weeks' time or something like that. I mean, for all we know, uh, tomorrow they're going to announce, or even later tonight, because it's still daytime in California, uh, they might well announce... Oh, we're going to do a Q&A on Thursday to talk about what's coming on in Legion. Um, 
and then next week there might be something on the PTR. For all we know, that could be what's happening. Uh, I suspect not, but you know, they, they might. If the expansion launches in September, when can we expect the pre-patch? A month before. Uh, the pre-patch will typically last a month. So they tend to bring that out one, about one month before the actual expansion comes in. But the expansion could easily launch in August. Doesn't necessarily have to. Like, you know, I, I said a couple of weeks ago, my bet is on the 28th of August. That is my bet for the actual release date. When do you expect them to give a hard release date? Well, that's an interesting question. In every expansion, up until but not including Legion, they always gave the release date two months before it went live. So they always gave us two months notice. In Legion, they gave us four months notice, which, you know, is literally double the notice that they've ever given before. So whether there was a particular reason for giving the four months notice or um, that's their new way of doing things now, I don't know. Obviously, if they were going to give four months notice, then you would probably guess round about April, they would say. Um, but, you know, it's difficult to know. The most recent expansion, they gave four months notice. Every other expansion before that, they gave two. You hope they mentioned PvP in the upcoming q and I hope you've been cheeky there. They didn't stop talking about PvP in the last one. And yet managed to say nothing about PvP. Did they actually manage to even say anything about PvP? They talked about it for about half an hour. And I don't think they actually said anything. Oh, hang on. Some more stuff. Data. Oh, there's a wolf mount data mine. Yeah, I want a doggy mount. Got enough wolf mounts. I've got I've got wolf mounts. The best wolf mount actually was for the uh, what was it now? Was it the it might have been the achievements for Siege of Orgrimmar. I think it was for doing the achievement run in Siege of Um uh, I quite I sometimes use that on a few of my characters. Like it goes quite well with Pandaren. Oh, you need a frog mount. Well, there was a B mount, wasn't there? For, uh, data mount for Battle for Azeroth. Although I don't know if that's intended for players. But that would be interesting if we could get a B mount. Giant B mount. Uh, I'm not sure I'd want a frog mount. Like the thing that puts me off raptors, for example, everyone talks about how great looking the um, special edition raptor mount is for BFA, is the bounce up and down. I remember getting my first raptor mount when I came back to the game in Wrath of the Lich King, um, just very briefly to play a bit of casual player. And I did the horde equivalent of the winter saber mount, which was for a raptor. I eventually got it. And that it was just bouncing up and down all the time. It did my head in. So I thought, oh, no, I don't like raptors. A frog would be much worse, surely. A frog would be a dreadful mount to have. Remember Ward where there was a wolf reskins for the entire expansion? Yes. Culminating in that bright green monstrosity for uh, Hellfire Citadel, as I recall. You got the Alterite Valley Rep Frost Wolf. Ah, oh, see, we got a goat on Alliance for that. You could get a goat. It's a goat. The beam out does look good, but I don't know how practical it would be. If I'm honest. Parrot mount. Don't need a giant bloody parrot in the game, do we? <coughs> no, what I want is a Pegasus mount for my paladin. You know, if they give, I mean, they seem to do, you know, class-based mounts once every 12 years. So it might, you know, I don't think the game will still be running in another 12 years' time. But if they get the chance, they want a Pegasus mount. Can't believe they came up with that shit. You love the Warlord's Death Wheel. 
Was that a mount? Did that, was that available as a mount? I don't have that in that case then. I don't think I do anyway. The shared consciousness thing looks cool, the hive mind. I don't know. Just seeing some uh, some more models being data mined. There's some new versions of harvest golems, which look quite neat. With broken ship's wheels on them. WoW will be around 10 years from now. It may be. Um, I'm not sure quite in what state the game will be. I definitely think it'll get to 20th anniversary. But it's always a bit funny with games. Because, you know, sudden things can happen. The motorcycle. Oh, that thing. Oh, no. Yeah, it looks all right. That looks okay. I was thinking you were thinking like the Iron Horde um, wheel bomb things. You could, you could get like a... I was thinking that existed in mount form, in which case, oh, I've not seen that. That would be quite cool. No, I know what you mean now. Yeah, Horde got it for free. Alliance had to pay for those. Although, to be fair, the Alliance one did look shit. So, you know. I never did buy it. Yeah, I know I know which one you mean now, yeah. I did actually watch that series. Yeah. The Alliance version looks like a silver caterpillar. Um I can't remember what it was actually called. No, the Horde one actually looked okay. The Alliance one didn't. The Alliance one did not deserve to win. You can buy it. There's a vendor in the trade district in Stormwind where you can buy it from. It costs 100000 I think. You find it hilarious how the Horde winning the Death Wheel ended up making the Champion's Treadblade that much cooler to have. If it ever gets too bad, it'll go proper free to play with full with microtransactions. Mm, I, I'm not sure that I, I don't think Blizzard would be silly enough to just let it get bad before they do anything. Because I have no doubt they must have succession plans for the Warcraft franchise in whatever format they happen to be. Uh, it's a bit like everything else. You always have plans for, you know, when you're trying to keep a franchise going, you're obviously all, always going to have plans for how you manage that. Obviously, without going public, because as soon as they go public about the next step, then people will start to think, oh, wow, is dying then. Uh, so obviously, they're not going to be public about anything like that. Uh, the Warcraft lore is in such a mess at this point. Well, yes, it is. Um, I suppose it's what comes of having a free hand to do whatever you like with it. And when you get new sets of story writers coming and going, uh, there's no hand on the tiller, basically. They just do what they want. So, and I suppose the other thing is, like, they keep talking about the fact that they have, they work out these story arcs, like, years ahead of time. So, like, they know the storyline, not just for the next expansion, but the expansion after it, and potentially the expansion after that. You know, they work it all out like that. So... But the problem is that by the time, you know, the expansion after comes along, the people who wrote that story arc may have moved on and there might be new people who are having to fill in the gaps of it and, you know, try and make it work. So, yeah, you can end up with the right old mess. Whereas I always think with an MMO that's based on another franchise that doesn't belong to that studio, where they, they, they have borders they have lines that they can't really cross uh, because it has to be consistent with the established law so they tend to be a bit more careful i think anyone seen anything of a new movie what smith do you mean a warcraft movie in which case yes there's not going to be one 
Uh, Duncan Jones was tweeting about it before, just before Christmas, I think it was. Um, basically, it lost money. And as a result, they're not really going to fund another one. Because why would you fund a sequel for a film that lost money? Uh, probably end with Azeroth getting destroyed. I don't think getting destroyed. Like I think World of Warcraft. The thing, like I've I've said this for quite a while. Like the ideal ending to World of Warcraft would be Azeroth Awakening because that's the same thing as the world being destroyed from our point of view. Because once it wakes up, it's a Titan, a humanoid Titan. Uh, can't really live on it then. Um, with wow, well, oh, so why why did it lose money? It, there's various reasons why it might have lost money, but the fact of the matter is, it was savaged by various not critics actually. In fact, the main critic that I watch in the UK, who is not a particularly fantasy fan, he you know is not into that, but he praised it. Uh, but it has to be said, it did very badly in North America. And the other thing about the Warcraft film, which was quite notable, um, although I had to read Forbes to find this out was even in the territories where it did well, it did okay in Europe, it wasn't brilliant. It did very well in China. But what was noted was, wherever it was shown, it made its money in the first couple of weeks and then basically plummeted. So even in, like in Europe, it did pretty well in the first couple of weeks. But then there was no, it, it just, it didn't slowly decline, it just crashed. So that's an indicator that the people who went to see it are the people who wanted to see it before it ever came out. Because those are the people who will go and see it in the first two weeks. But what usually happens with a really good film is those people watch it and then they go to their friends, oh, this film was really good. Because despite what anyone will say, a lot of people that watch films watch it based on recommendations. Um, and they'll take the recommendations of their friends quite seriously. So if you know if you as a Warcraft fan go and watch it, oh, that's fantastic, and you go and tell your friends, yeah, you, you know, you might not be interested in Warcraft, but it's a really good film. You should go and see it. Then they'll go and see it. Obviously, that wasn't happening. So you know, first couple of weeks it was fine, and then pff, gone. Even in China, it was just like pff, nothing after that. I thought the Warcraft movie was good, uh, but there were some things in it. Like uh, in fact, in that interview with Peculiar, I can't remember how much of it was in because we talked about the Warcraft movie in both of the interviews. Uh, we may have talked about it for longer in the first one, which I didn't record. Sorry, But one thing I pointed out was, in the film, there's one part, like Lothar is called Lothar all the way through the film, but there's one part where he's called Anduin. Now, I know that he's called Anduin Lothar, but someone who knows nothing about Warcraft might go, what was that? You don't know what Anduin is. Is it his name? Is it his title? Is it something else? Is it a nickname? They don't know what that is. Someone suddenly is calling Anduin and he's never been introduced as Anduin in the film. That was a bit of an inconsistency. And what Peculiar mentioned, because she actually got to meet Duncan Jones. She went on a press thing when the Warcraft movie came out. You know, big important person. And she said that there were 50... The thing we saw on the, on the cinema and the thing we see now on the Blu-ray DVD is not what Duncan Jones made. They made him cut out 15 minutes of the film which affected the pacing of it. So we will never see the film he intended because there was no director's cut either, which I don't know the reason why not, but we don't get to see the director's cut. So there were things wrong with the film caused by people making him cut it down. And I don't know why, because it, it wasn't even a very long film, you know. And it could also be argued that, you know, there were a lot of characters in it uh, maybe it wasn't the ideal story to tell for the first film because there are a lot of characters in it and it's a lot to take in, maybe. Uh, people don't like orcs. Yeah, well, that was another thing I read into it. Like, I did remember reading a few American reviews that were basically accusing it of being a Tolkien ripoff. Uh, and you could sort of see why that... Like, as, as people who play fantasy games, we understand that basically... The first big fantasy game was Dungeons and Dragons. It took its influence directly from Tolkien and then embellished it. And then we know that other fantasy games have been produced by people who played Dungeons and Dragons and therefore that's a key influence for them. So we know that all fantasy games are basically produced by people who have been heavily influenced by Dungeons and Dragons and Tolkien. So inevitably, there's going to be a few little elements like that. 
okay. But for people who are into fantasy games, that you could see how they just see it as Lord of the Rings knockoff, um, which is fair enough. So all things considered, maybe the best film to have been done would have been the Lich King film. You know, maybe that would have been a better one to do. But it's not the one they did. So, you know, there it is. Or maybe, um, you know, The War of the Ancients, perhaps. Although that would have been very, very CGI heavy. So maybe not. But maybe the Lich King story. Uh, didn't, you know, so let's read some comments, sorry. Didn't feel like Warcraft, in your opinion. Also, the choice of cast wasn't exactly visionary. I don't know. I thought the cast was okay. Uh, obviously, in that, you're going to get some people who did a better job of acting than others. And all the characters had limited screen time. But I think they did. I think it was decent. Um, and I think it did feel like Warcraft. I thought it was I thought it was decent. But that's my opinion, obviously. All do our time walking releases. Yes. So, yeah, the Wrath time walking is now coming. So that means we may... I don't know whether... To, I'm, a, I'm only going to do it if the Guild wants to do it. All do our time walking. Um, but, yes, might be doing all do our time walking. Orcs not look well. They don't look like the Lord of the Rings ones, but they are orcs, and it has to be said, orcs are a Tolkien invention. It's not like other fantasy races that Tolkien himself, because Tolkien himself drew inspiration from like Scandinavian fantasy, uh, like lore, myths, and legends. But um, orcs were basically his device; they were his creation. So inevitably. Someone is going to, you know, look at fancy and think, well, that's just basically copied off Tolkien stuff. You know, and well, I mean, we can know that the reason for that is when when Warcraft 1 came out, it needed something for people to get a handle on. They're bringing out this game. They're a small studio at the time. And they bring out a game, Warcraft, Orcs versus Humans. Uh, it's not even just called Warcraft. It's Warcraft, Orcs versus Humans. To get so that people understand what they're getting, you know, they're deliberately trading on the fact that this is a familiar fantasy setting. Um, and then, obviously, over time, they embellished it with their own lore and creatures and stuff like that. But the orcs, because it was there right from the start, to give it that initial boost in the market, uh, they're sort of stuck with. But you know, that's just unfortunately the way it is. Uh, thought the orcs were better in displaying their story and animation than the humans. Possibly because maybe more time was spent on the orcs because, the I mean, the bottom line is the orcs are invading the humans. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Uh, so to try and avoid the orcs just being seen as straight up bad guys, you had to have, obviously you had to have a bad guy orc. Well, that was Gul'dan. Um, but you also had to have good guy orcs in order to balance it. So that meant a fair amount of development with, as it turns out, Orgrim and Duratar. Duratan, sorry. Duratar's the place he was named after. Uh, no, the place that was named after him. Bloody Orcs. Um, you're currently on Yogg-Saron this very moment. All oh, right, with the... Uh, yeah, well, that's something they didn't do. I mean, that... Yeah, I was disappointed that certain... Bits of the storyline were changed. I can understand some of it, but I really wish they'd have pursued, instead of Garona killing Lane because Lane wanted her to kill him, they'd have done it as it was at the time with the Siege of Stormwind and her being effectively mind-controlled by Gul'dan. Um, you know, that would have been better. But, you know, that's just that's just that. It felt like a ton of fan service by showing off big areas in Warcraft. Well, I mean, the Dalaran was the interesting thing because, of course, in the film, you could tell that it was linked to the... Uh, it was supposed to be linked to Walls of Draenor, but the film was delayed. Because, of course, Dalaran in the movie is flying. But Dalaran at that time was not. It was stuck in the ground where that crater currently is. Uh, it only flew during World of Warcraft time. They should make a second movie and make it based on when the Black Empire ruled Azeroth. 
watch the Lovecraft rip-off comments and follow. Well, inevitably. Well, yeah, I mean, the thing is, there's nothing terribly original about Warcraft lore. Individual storylines may be original if they've been done by a good writer, usually writing a novel rather than in the game. But the overall things are not terribly original. You know, if you point to any sort of bit, you can always draw a parallel with something else that's come before it. I mean, even the end cinematic with Kill Jaden and Velen and Kill Jaden's going, you know, I never believed we could defeat him. Maybe you'll prove me wrong. That's basically out of Lord of the Rings. That's that's Saruman. You know, Saruman didn't join Sauron just because he didn't think, you know, he because he wanted to. He did it because he wanted power and he didn't think Sauron could be defeated. But he wasn't sure, you know. There was a potential turning point where he may have been on the side of Gandalf. Uh, and that's just straight out of that. So he just ripped it straight out. Uh, isn't that what makes WoW the WoW we love? It takes bits and pieces from things that work, slap it together in a way that kind of makes sense and it's fine. Well, yes. Uh, it would still be better if they had original stories and stuck to them. What I don't like is when they keep changing things. I particularly don't like it when they change something and then say they never changed it. That's just, that's naughty. If they're going to change something, they should just admit they've changed it. Um, but I wish they wouldn't change it at all in the first place. Make one with the Titans and wait for the Avengers or Thor ripoff. Well, they're not going to make one at all anyway, because it lost money. Um, so that's it. That's all there was to it. It needed to make about another, I can't remember how far short it was. It was about 40 to $50 million or something. It was short of breaking even. So, mm. disappointing. Disappointing. If I could bring any fantasy figure into WoW, May not make sense, just choose. What, as a character or as a race, do you mean? Anything. Uh... I don't know. I'm not sure how many would actually survive. Gand right, if we go through like with like um, Lord of the Rings ones, so Gandalf wouldn't survive because he'd be amazed that there's all these wizards about. So that's no good. He's, he likes being special snowflake. Um, Aragorn wouldn't really survive because he's just a shit hunter without a pet. Fred Flintstone. Mm, don't have bowling in WoW though. He would have nothing to do. Is there anything not already in WoW? Well, that's the thing. You've even got like He Man, haven't you? There's like a Prince Adam, is it called? And Battle Cat, or Cringer type Battle Cat in, uh, in TBC. Paris Hilton was in, wasn't it? Yes. With the glasses. In fact, well, I mean, that's another thing that people... I noticed there was another thing on Reddit uh, about just suggesting... Because obviously each expansion, they usually reference some members of the community in either... An NPC is when you've really made it, but also an item. You know, like Skullflower had a legendary named after him. Uh, Peculiar had a ring named after him, stuff like that. But there's people obviously talking about the fact that Haven should get... Um, something I would suggest an NPC uh, so people will be on the lookout to see if anything actually does pop up related to him well I haven't got absolute let's say 
Well, actually, I do have quite a lot of things, don't we? Uh, I'm trying to think now. What don't we have? I should get out of my Dungeons and Dragons monster book and see what we don't have. We probably have got most things. No, 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 no. I'm not in favour of being violent towards political figures. Even if they the the feeling is not mutual. Um Oh, there was another photo in the last week of his hair being blown around by a sudden gust of wind when he got into a helicopter or something. I don't know why I can't just, like, you know, grow old with dignity. I mean, I'm losing my hair at some point. I need a haircut, actually. It's, it's some, you don't know, try and do the comb over. Comb over just looks bad. You know, it's worse than a wig, a comb over. It's like someone basically saying, I'm going bald. But I'm not having it, but I can't be asked to get a wig. So I'm just going to try and I'm just going to do this and I'm going to try and convince you that it's growing correctly when everyone knows it's not. So you're actually trying to ask people to collude in a lie, which is not very nice. I'm sure there must be something. Oh, I'll tell you what we haven't had. No, I know something we haven't had in World of Warcraft, I think. We haven't had genies. Like, or gin, whatever you want to call them. Then Are they in? They're not in, are they? My head, because my bald bottle is on top. That's all. So, but at some point, it'll, it'll you know, spread. Uh, I don't matter. I don't care. You just end up, I just end up keeping it cut short. It's fine. It'll do what it does. Kata, what was there in Kata? I don't remember a genie. I don't remember rubbing a lamp. Does the warlock pet cat? You don't rub a... Alakir. Ah. Uh, hmm. Does he count... He might, all right, he might be, all right, I'd, yeah. I'd fail to take account of that. Yeah, you might be able to say that. All right, well, in that case, I can't think of anything that hasn't been. I had forgotten about that. I didn't play much of Cataclysm, to be fair. So, yeah, okay, maybe there hasn't been, maybe they've done everything. That's pretty bad news. We've even had uh, dancing sunflowers, so yeah, we've basically had everything, haven't we? Fred Flintstone it is. Well, okay, yeah, well... We'll petition Blizzard to put Fred Flintstone in. We've had Ninja Women. Didn't you see the... Uh, see later, Smith. Didn't you see there was... Um, oh, there was some machinima done some years ago that involved a, uh, like a ninja, female ninja, uh, getting into Stormwind. Can't remember what it's called now. Well, I don't know how feasible it would be for them to, for example, make capes that didn't clip with weapons so much. That would be quite nice. I mean, there's sometimes with some weapons I don't wear capes at all, just because, you know. Well, I'd quite like some options of capes that go out with a hood. But you don't get that either. Sometimes you can get the hoods, and if you can find a cape that sort of matches it, you can sort of pretend, but it's a bit crap. Doesn't really work. And of course, it's not an option for a plate wearer. That's also something I don't really like with Transmog. The fact that I can't make my character look how I want. Because, oh no, you're only allowed to do, you know, 
Like, occasionally there's the odd cosmetic piece of gear, like my captain's hat that I'm allowed to wear. That's one of the reasons for wearing that. Tier 19. Tier 19 what? I'd like a lot more transmog freedom. I, I don't understand these um, restrictions they put in place. Hang on a minute. Wouldn't it look cool riding around Dalla in his car? Whose car? What car? Oh, Fred Flintstone's car. No, because you've got to push it yourself. It's like a kiddie's car. Tier 19 has a hood. Not my tier 19, it doesn't. My tier 19 is another bastardised version of tier 6. Medusa, you've got like Lady Vash for that. If you're trying to think of things, fantasy tropes that have not been in World of Warcraft before. I mean, she's got snakes for hair. So that's sort of been in there as well. Actually, I'll tell you what, on the subject of uh, Greek Titans, though, you know, I don't have a Pegasus mount. That's something I'm missing. Mythic Paladin tier 2. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I don't know what the tier 19 looks like then. I've forgotten, obviously forgotten. I'll go and have a look later. What do you miss? We're discussing Transmog, I think, at the moment. Could I count Tyrael's Charger? I desperately wanted to count Tyrael's Charger as one because it's the closest thing there is to a flying Paladin mount, as in one that looks like it should fly. But unfortunately, those like Diablo angel wings are just too wispy and feeble. I want glorious proper wings proper pegasus wings so no i i did use it for a little bit i was desperate to make myself like it but uh, so i have it but i don't use it anymore because it's just not it's feeble all they had to do was give the class mount some wings yes that's all they had to do they should have made it white a white horse it with white big white wings and it would have been pretty good I still don't like the barding on it. I think it's too clunky. But, you know, it, if it was a Pegasus mount, then that would I would use it. I would actually use it. Whereas at the moment, I'm using the Warframe because that is actually the best flying paladin mount there's in this game. And it's for anyone. Anyone can wear it. Even gnomes can use the Warframe. It's disgraceful. Absolutely disgraceful. Jabber, well, that's just basically a giant gastropod. If I thought about it, I'm pretty sure I could think of where there's some of those in WoW. Although I can't think just offhand. Oh yeah, the shoe zen mount. As soon as they fix it, then it should look good. They did knacker it a bit. They did say they're going to deal with it though. It does fly. It's not the flying that I'm particularly bothered about, though, because it doesn't look like it should fly. It's, I don't like these mounts that have got no business flying that fly. You know, a dog has got no business flying. The only mount without wings that should fly is the Headless Horseman's mount. That's fine. That's okay. Everything else, all right, you know, the Cloud Serpents, they're okay too. But, you know... Do we have lightsabers? Yes, we do have lightsabers. Yes. Uh, the easiest lightsaber to get is off the first boss in Slave Pens. That, there's a, a caster sword it drops, which is a lightsaber. Um, there was another one. There were two, actually, in vanilla. One of which was a world drop BOE. So you could, in theory, still get that on the auction house. I can't remember what it's called, though. The other one was for a quest reward, which doesn't exist anymore. And it was called the Argent something or other. It was for one of the Plaguelands quests. For a dungeon. Can't remember if it was Stratho or Scholomance. 
I've got it. I've got it somewhere. I think I've got it saved in my transmog somewhere. Oh, T Blue's Blazing Longsword. Yeah, that's the one. That, that's the BOE one, and that's orange. The other one, the Argent one, is blue. The one you can get from Slave Pens is blue as well. So yeah, you can have lights. They're they're quite fair. The T Blue's Blazing Longsword is better because that's a bit. The blade looks a bit better for that. What I'm missing is a Death Star. Hmm. Yes, we have had spaceship shoots lasers though, haven't we? Your message wasn't set due to channel's moderation settings. Did we try and use the the you know small diminutive annoying creature word? Because I I don't think there's anything else I'd ban in the channel. Obviously, links are banned. That's just standard settings. I could change it, but I'm not going to. Um, all right, let me have a look then. Let us see. No character customization options found. I don't think it's going to work. I'll have a look later. Oh, no, it's, it's showing up now. Oh, yeah. What the hell? What is this? Oh, no, that looks dreadful. That's got one of those weedy little capes that, that just goes down to your ass. No, no, no. If I'm going to have a cape, I want a proper one. It goes down to me. It needs to go down to my... Uh, below the knee, at least. If I'm going to have a cape. Not that. That's that's like having to wear a tea towel over your back. Uh, didn't Argus count as a Death Star? Yeah, I guess it did, actually. I don't know that they were intending to shoot uh, Azeroth from it. I think it was literally just trying to summon... Um, Sargeras in so he could smash it with his sword there's a two handed lightsaber from their starting quest yes people have told me about that before Uh, the lich, the the best one for hood and cloak, has it got a cloak? Actually, it might just be a hood. I think it's a cloak as well. Is the Anduin in disguise model? That was very good. Yeah, we should be able to get that. But the Lich King set was quite good as well. It was a bit tattered though, so not really suitable for a paladin, but you know, for some classes it'd be suitable. Well, Death Knights, I suppose, most suitable for. But even so, the hood includes like a faceplate, so you know, I don't want the faceplate, I just want the hood. Now, you can get hoods, the hoods were quite popular in vanilla. And in theory, as I say, you could get a cloak that matches it and you could make yourself one, a pseudo version, but it wouldn't work for a paladin because it wouldn't be plate. That's the issue. I mean, the cloak would be fine, but the hood, I don't think you're going to find a plate hood. And this one, although it is a hood that's a plate, it includes the face plate, which I don't want. You would like cloak transmogs that semi-cover the rest of your armour transmog code options too. Ah, oh, well, they'll never do that. Yeah, I mean, most of the cloaks are just not suitable. I, I, I suppose what I particularly don't get is some of those vanilla ones that were basically two strips that just go down your back. And again, not even making it... Most of the early, like the low-level capes, don't even make it to your ass. They are, they are literally just tea towels hanging from your back. Like a kid pretending they're Superman. But then low level gear should look, it should make you look stupid. Because that was all part of it. As you got higher and higher level, you could wear gear that looks more and more impressive. In theory. Whereas now I find myself just transmogging everything into stuff that I got in vanilla and TBC. Because although there's been some reasonable sets since, none of them are as good as those. Ooh, 
What the hell? MMO champion. Tweet. Battle for Azeroth appears to be retiring first aid. Moving achievements to legacy and bandage crafting to tailoring. Bear in mind that's, you know, data mining. Sometimes, sometimes things go a bit weird with data mining. But, yeah, well, that's what it's... I mean, this is purely based on data mining, and it's based on the fact that achievements have been moved. But tailors get it. Tailors do get some... What are you on about? They're making mech bags. Um, they can also make flying carpets. No, I haven't used first aid. I, haven't, I don't think I've even leveled my first aid up this expansion. I've done some leveling of it, but I haven't, I haven't leveled it to 800 is what I mean. So, yeah. The last time I used first aid, like properly used it, was probably TBC. I mean, I know I've still got in the video me using bandages on the Illidan fight. Because there were various parts of the fight where you had to just move out because you had to spread. And I couldn't be in melee range of anything, so I just stood there like an idiot. So I used to bandage myself, and then I used to bandage other people around me as well. Um, but that... Well, though, uh, to be honest, you swear oh God almighty. They might, because, like you just said, and first aid is not really used. If it's not really used, and... Is there any point in it? We'll still have bandages. They'll come from tailoring. Presumably it just means you don't need any skill to use them. Um, I don't think it means you need to be a tailor to use them and just to craft them. And other people could use them just like health pots if you want them. But yeah, it's show because what it's showing is it showing, so first aid, uh, there's a pattern for antiseptic bandage, which has been moved from the first aid to tailoring and does use tailoring materials, a sumptuous fur, which is used for ta excuse me for tailoring. And as it says, they've moved the achievements to legacy. So it absolutely looks like it's going. Why not make first aid relevant? Well, does it matter? It's a secondary profession, and if people don't use it, and I think it's probably fair to say people are not, by and large, using it, is it worth making it relevant? You doubt they remove a profession? It's very believable. Um, you know, sometimes you do get people trying to you know, join two things together based on data mined information and not always coming to the right conclusion. Uh, this one, it would be very difficult. Okay, so let's, let's reconcile these two things then. One, the bandage is a tailoring recipe now. And it uses tailoring materials. That's a fact. Tailors are going to be able to make bandages. That's what's come out of it. So that's a fact. Why would that be if there's going to be first aid still? Second... The first aiding achievements have all been moved to legacy achievements. Those two things do sort of suggest that this is not likely to be a, uh, a false conclusion. So, yeah, uh, it's, uh, that's first aid gone. Gone. Sayonara. Thanks for all the memories. See you later. I mean, this is the first expansion where I don't even carry bandages around with me. Uh, in what I used to carry them around, I never used them, but I used to keep them just out of habit. And now even the habit's gone. It's just, just don't use them. Uh, not much middle ground between relevant and mandatory for raiding. Well, when it comes to raiding, yeah. So, you know, if something is useful, it is mandatory in raiding. But even for other things, I mean, bandaging is not useful, for example, even for solo play, for people who don't have self-heals, because you would do better just to eat. And I'm not saying you have to use expensive buff food. You know, just normal food you get off a vendor will heal you better than a bandage. I 
And of course, for that sort of thing, you don't need uh, any skill to do it. If they function with some sort of cleanse mechanic, you can see them being useful in arenas, I assume you mean. The, in, they try and restrict, though. In arenas, they tend to ban quite a lot of profession stuff, though, don't they? Oh, the Bear Tartar. Yeah, the Bear Tartar I've used sometimes in, like, uh, Mythic Plus dungeons. If I think there's going to be having to be some sprinting done between trash packs. What's my favourite allied race? Void Elf. By far the coolest. Oh, Aria's not... Oh, you did actually mean Aria. Sorry, I thought you'd mistyped it. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't... I think, you know, I think it's easily... I think you can easily do without it. Like, cooking's relevant. Fishing's relevant. Um, first aid. Not really. Not really. I suppose that means that there's going to be a dark, um, dark moon fair NPC who's suddenly going to be out of work, though. You know, because we're not going to need the first aid guy anymore. Like in a raid, use a bandage to clear a poison debuff. Yeah, but no, no. But see, that's then taking stuff away from healers. Like in Legion. In the early stages of Alpha in Legion, um, like my, I have a cleanse as a paladin. I can cleanse diseases and poisons. That was removed. Uh, only healers had the ability to remove debuffs at one point. Then they gave it us back. Um, you know, so they changed my mind there. But they do have this attitude, and they've repeated it again for BFA. They have this thing of they don't like it when people, like non healers, do healer jobs. So, yeah, there'd be no way that they would do that. With I don't think it's even worth saving. I mean, there are some things, like, if it was Inscription, you know, I mean, I thought Inscription was in danger of becoming irrelevant when they removed glyphs. So that's why they had to add in things like the tomes and stuff and Vantus runes. Um, you know, when it's a primary profession that people will have put a proper amount of time in and they've chosen it over something else, okay, it's worth saving. But when it's a secondary profession, it doesn't. If it's not being used, you might as well just lose it, because it's something that no one make. You don't have to sacrifice anything, like you don't have to choose between first aid and something else. It's not like a profession's just been taken away, and you could have had another. Uh, the first aid guy does JC too. Oh, does it same one? Okay, well, all right. He can keep half his job. He goes down to half salary. His salary is now pro rata, 0.5. Engineering doesn't make any money auction house-wise. No, I can imagine not, but it is useful. Engineering is useful because you can pop Jeeves in a mailbox. And a Blinktron 6,000, but never a Blinktron 5,000. Don't need any more of them. Well, I don't know. It's difficult to say what will and will not make money. It may do. You drop the tailoring because you've got... I haven't actually leveled up a tailor, I have to say. I've got tailors at level 110 who were tailors in the previous one, so, but I haven't actually done the tailoring quest myself, I have to admit. Because, yeah, I've got burnt out by doing all these profession quests that I can't be asked with, I have to admit. So I don't technically have a tailor for Legion. I should at least get it on one. I mean, I've got a tailor on like multiple characters, but what I mean is I should actually level up the tailoring on at least one. If, well, I think as an alcoholic, you probably hate them more like I do because you've got to do it on more of them. You're hoping more professions see use in the raiding scene. They tried that before and it wasn't very successful. Um, I, okay, they could try and maybe do it in a different way, but they have tried it before and it was a disaster. Because people were choosing professions based on what gave them the best bonus in raids as opposed to the one that they wanted to do. What do I think of the professionals' quest lines? You know, it was nice that they put stuff in 
to give a bit more meat to professions, but they were a bit shit. So I'd have rather they'd have not done that. I can do without it. I know that we're trying to do, and I don't want to knock them for what they were trying to do, but it just it wasn't interesting at all to me. And I remember one, there was one alchemy quest which was particularly annoying because like some of the quests you had to like kill a particular boss in uh, dungeons, which is fine. Uh, but there was one in particular for an alchemy quest where you had to do uh, a boss in Vault of the Warders, but it wasn't one of the normal bosses. It was a boss for which you could only access if you were an alchemist who used this like, I think you had to use the, the invisibility potion. So, and every time I tried to get a group to do it, they didn't do it because it's a delay, it's delaying for them. So I ended up having to boost my own monk with my paladin. I had to solo the place on my paladin at a time when obviously it'd be easy to do now on normal and it won't be easy to do on heroic even. In fact, I should think I'd be able to solo it on uh, mythic. But at the time that was challenging because I wasn't in super great gear. It's still Emerald Nightmare. An early Admiral Nightmare at that. So, yeah. I had to solo my way through bloody uh, Vault of the Wardens, at least to that boss, so that I could get it. JC's lost its ways in your eyes since sockets are only a Warforged thing. Yeah, although gems... I mean, gems will always be needed because people do get sockets. You know, the chance of getting a socket... Again, it's not common, but it's not rare either. So they are still always in need. Uh, the BFA hype's quite low. The less hype, the less quality is expected from the expansion. I think it will build up. It will build up. But I, I, I agree that there's less hype than there was for Legion, but that's because we know less about it. There's nothing very exciting about the theme of the expansion being Alliance versus Horde, because someone might look at that and go, uh, well, that's World of Warcraft, isn't it? Uh, whether it should or it shouldn't be is another matter, but it's sort of what it is. So, yeah, to say, you know... You know, it's a, it does seem, yeah, a little bit silly. Uh, you recently soloed the alchemy on your demon hunter. You have to clear the whole place. Yes, you do. That's the thing. Um, but, and as I say, I mean, I was doing it like, uh, God almighty, when was it now? Over a year ago. Can height be objectively measured? No. <laughs> Not really, no. Um, unless there's some cunning way that some sociologist has come up with. You just want a consumable lock closet from one of the professions, either engineer or maybe inscription or something. What the hell? A consumable lock closet. What's that? You mean a summon stone? People should get their own way to the bloody instance. At this point, on such a small planet, a war this long would have ended one way or the other. Oh, I don't know about that. Have you ever heard of the Hundred Years' War? It didn't actually last for a hundred years, but it lasted for a bloody long time. Uh, consumable summon stone. Yeah, I mean... You can't take more stuff off Warlocks, to be fair. And if you gave, like, another version of it, that's that's effectively like nicking another use for Warlocks. Poor old Warlocks. There's a new item for engineers that battle reses people. Yeah, it's called the... Uh, damn it, I forgot what it's called. Uh, the failure detection pylon, isn't it? Yeah, we sometimes use those as white recovery. I mean, it wouldn't be needed... If when a wipe's called, we still had a combat res available and then someone could just randomly combat res a load of people. 
Um, but usually when a wipe's called, it's because we've got no more battle reses. So yeah, the failure detection pylon works then. Uh, you just surprised 12 years and these pirates and sea explorers still haven't told us what's on the other side of Azeroth. Because there's nothing. There's nothing there. It's just sea. Um, oh, thank you, Kage. See you later. Have a good day. Well, we'll be nearly finishing up now anyway because you know, we've gone over time again. Um... Oh, a new item that actually battle res is like a combat res. Oh, I see. Oh, for Battle for Azeroth, you mean? Ah, well, do you know what? That reminds me, that brings me back. Long time ago now, I say a long time ago, a fair time ago. Um, when I noticed on the PTR, I did a video about this. This was before we knew we were going to Kul Taras, by the way. Uh, before anything had been leaked out. And... Uh, you know, and there's a pattern you can get in Legion Blacksmith that appeared in patch something. I can't remember, 7.2.5 or something. For an anchor. So this thing, basically, you use this thing and it sends you, it shoots you down to the bottom of whatever bit of water you're in. And people were saying at that, oh, it's probably a bit of a hint that we're going to an island or something. Uh, it turned out to be true. But, uh, yeah. Do you know what it might be, though? If there's an engineering item that battle reses, like a combat res, it might be some. Is it something that only engineers can use? Because if it's like drums for leather workers, it might be something that people can take from Mythic Plus to avoid the need to have a battle reser in, or two. Like, you always need, like, two battle reses in the party if you want to be super serious about it so that you've, you've always got a battle res. Because you can't just take one. Because if you take one, they might be the one who dies. That's no good. Remember, you had to buy a bunch of those pylons for your guild bank because you failed some tanking mechanics. Ooh. Uh, Azeroth is it's not flat. I mean, it's got mountains. Anything that's got mountains by and large isn't really flat. Um, also, we've seen it from space now. So we could sort of say that it's not. You hope it has to be an engineering thing only. If not, let it be consumed so you can sell it. Oh, yeah, well, that's what I would assume. I would assume... I don't know. I have not seen this. It's the first I've heard of it. I don't know what it is. Uh, but given that I don't know anything about it, I would assume that it's... Um, if it's a flat disc, how is it rotating? Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. So I would assume it would be consumed like drums, like literally. If I was if I was designing it, I would make it literally like the leather workers' drums. It's a consumable that okay will be made by engineers, but could be used by anyone. That would be preferable to me. Which side is this on? Why is my light not behaving itself? Annoying. I keep having to piss about with that thing. Um, yes. Oh, very good. I'm joining. I heard we had members all around Azeroth. Yes, excellent. There was, uh, I mean, speaking of Duncan Jones earlier, he, he, there was a retweet of something, some like evolution denier. And it's always hilarious when you sometimes hear them talking about evolution and, and they never actually understand. It's always funny when they don't actually understand what it is. They'll be like saying, "Oh no, no, no!" And this has never happened. It's like, yeah, that's that's because they were they they were thinking that evolution means that a creature, a single creature, not a species, an actual creature, could suddenly turn into a different species during its lifespan. It's like, and and they would think, and 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 you think to yourself, is that why you don't think evolution's a thing? Because you think that monkeys suddenly turn into humans. Is that where the difficulties lie? In? But anyway, 12 days, naught hours, 12 minutes, 44 seconds to reach level 58 on undocumented vanilla server with a shaman. 
It took, well, I mean, I probably got the world record for my first character, my paladin, because I still remember to this day, I don't remember the exact time, but I know it was 21 days and something, because I did a slash blade when I hit it. I can't remember the fiddly bits, but I remember 21 days. And the reason for that was because I was, uh, well, a paladin, but mostly it was because of my professions. I was a tailor and an enchanter. And whenever I play an MMO, I want to keep up to date with my professions. I don't, like, I know the efficient thing to do would just to get to level cap, and then you can work on your professions because they're not going to be of any bloody use to you while you're leveling anyway. That's never the way that it works. But I don't care. I like professions and I like to work on them as a level. So, and with, and like with tailoring, I could make stuff and put it on the auction house. That was easy. That was fine. Except I didn't. I disenchanted it for enchanting materials. But for enchanting, you couldn't. Like now you can put it on a vellum and put it on the auction house. Then you couldn't. You had to enchant the item directly. So, and I couldn't afford to just keep, I couldn't farm enough reagents to be able to level it up. I needed extra. And I couldn't just afford to get them on the auction house either. So I had to ultimately sell and chance to be able to fund further skilling of it. Uh, so that meant spending a long time in Ironforge selling and chance, sometimes for two hours at a time. And then the other times when I'd go out farming stuff just to be able to make the things I needed to skill up the tailoring as well. Like I remember being in Alterac farming fire elementals just to get the elemental fire to be able to make the robe of fire which I could then, which was worth decent skill points, and I could then disenchant for blue crystals, and then use those to sell enchants of something. Because uh, there were some enchants that did pretty well, like fiery enchant always sold pretty well. Beast slayer enchant, because it had a nice red glow. That was always a good one. Uh, you were never in a rush to level in vanilla. Well, no, I wasn't. Uh, as I say, I was wanted to make sure I kept my professions in step. Um, so, yeah, it took me over 21 game days, which represented a period. Actually, can I, f let me see if I can find myself. There was a website. Can I remember the bloody name of it uh, there was a website where you could it kept a track on like it was a census thing I can't remember what it was called it would track at uh, where you were and it was working years later as well but I can't remember what it was called so I'll never find it now will I but um Uh. And and I could look back and see what date I got like different levels, uh, even if I'd forgotten about them. Because I know I started playing it in May two thousand and five. I can't remember when I hit sixty. Right about summer, so a couple of months later. Uh, when you started with, I remember it was really looking to get enchanting. Not because of the stats, but because of the pretty glow on the weapons. Well, for me, it just looked like the most fun. Like, the the ability to be able to enchant your gear. Because I sort of understood. Like, blacksmithing and mining might have been a more obvious one. But I sort of understood I'd be able to get uh, armor and weapons elsewhere as well. But enchanting, obviously, I thought, well, that's only going to come from that profession. Which was true. So enchanting made sense. And then what goes with enchanting? Nothing else naturally went with it other than tailoring. Because tailoring, you could get yourself, you could get the raw materials yourself, and you could disenchant the stuff to make the stuff for the tailor, uh, enchanting. So, although it sounded weird being a paladin with tailoring, it made perfect sense. And it also meant I could make mooncloth bags. And I was so keen, because you could only make one piece of mooncloth a week. And, and I went on holiday with some friends. Uh... And I was so keen not to miss my moon cloth that I gave my friend, another friend who wasn't going on holiday with me, my login detail so that at some point they could just, all they had to do, I, I sat them in Darkshore uh, and I said, look, just log me in, walk forwards 10 paces to the moon well, craft this thing, walk back to the inn, log out, which you did. 
Hang on a minute, what's this? Up until you were educated, you used kick in your rotation. Ooh. Okay. Well, I suppose if you don't read these things, too okay. I mean, I, I, I had my own embarrassing moments anyway in, in terms of not realising how things worked. I mean, I remember a player using a pickpocket emote on me and thinking he'd actually nick some money off me. You know, I could probably do a top five of the stupidest things, the most ignorant things I did at the time. Um, I want as Joel Narup. As that was the first realm I was ever on. No. But I can't remember. I'm looking at Guild Docs at the moment, but I don't think that's it. I, I've, I've completely, you know, I don't know what it is. It's a bloody shame, though. I can't remember the name of this site. I'm not likely to come across it. I might try and search for it later, but if I can't remember what it's called, I'm not likely to succeed. Yeah, well, I didn't have that excuse of only being 14 at the time. I was, uh, you know, uh, 20, either 28 or 29. I suppose 29. I remember I turned 30 during Anchorage, so I was turned 30 during Vanilla. So I should have known better. But I didn't. Hmm. But anyway, uh, I think we have gone on for long enough there. I'm going to call it there. Uh, thanks for coming on, everyone. I'll be back on streaming again tomorrow and stuff like that. I am going to do a couple of late streams this week as well, uh, but not today. Maybe tomorrow and Thursday after the raids as well as a Friday one. Uh, as I'm on holiday, I don't have to sort of get to bed by midnight. Uh, so I might do some levelling on my North American ones as well there. Uh, but uh, thanks for coming on then. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.